What a time of the year. What great sports going on. Big Sills, hit the like button. Appreciate everybody coming on. Look at this. Already rolling in on this Monday. I appreciate it. You know what? People always tell me this. This is the downtime in sports. Not what I saw this past weekend. The Kentucky Derby was awesome. The F1 that was down in South Florida was spectacular. You know what? And I'm going to say this to you too. The NBA playoffs have been remarkable, have been tough. They remind me of 90s basketball when people are knocking the shit out of one another. Fantastic. Plus, we are getting closer and closer to the National Football League's training camps and college football. I mean it, guys. This is where it is. Baseball, there is so much going on right now. And the storylines are spectacular. If you tune on a show and you hear an idiot do this, I got nothing to say. Turn that guy's show off immediately. Because there is so much to always say in the world of sports. It's the one galvanizing thing I tell you guys all the time that's left in the world for us to sit here as Republicans, Democrats, Independents, and sit here and talk sports. Debate it. Have a conversation about it. Maybe a little bit heated. But nobody gets butthurt over this stuff. It's not going to happen. You know, this is the best platform I've been on. I mean, Twitter's awful. And at times, radio, you become a salesman now. You're no longer given the ability to actually do true radio any longer. So this is really an awesome platform. Oh, Big Chris. I mean, that thing on Saturday with the Kentucky Derby, it started off at 99 to 1, and the horse ended up winning 80 to 1. Rich Strike, unbelievable ride. It was sensational. By the way, F1 was sensational in Miami. I know Xander and the Krause family were down there. Funny, Xander just said something to me. Sills, the heat. Okay, it's one thing about it being hot, but the humidity down there. I understand why Miami's got a 58-game home win streak now. Nobody was coming down to South Florida and beating us. Nobody. Coach Johnson and Coach Snellenberger, man, ran our asses for a point. And you know what that point was? Any team that came down to the Orange Bowl, you were getting your ass kicked. You were going to get your ass kicked. All right. I know by now everyone has heard the news that Joel Embiid has lost the MVP award to Joker. You know, I tweeted something out. Maybe somebody could take it one way or you can run with it another way. It's a good look for the NBA to have a white guy as the NBA's most valuable player. It's a good look for Europeans. It's a good look for you expanding your sport. It's, and by the way, there were three guys that you could probably have said, right? Also, Giannis could have been in that conversation. But, dude, can I say this about Joel Embiid? Please. So he's playing in a series now with a cracked skull and a broken hand. And he's now carried that team to a 2-2 tie against the Heat. Man, man, is that legend. You want to know how to get the Philadelphia sports fans on your side? Joel Embiid just backed up the truck and said, all bandwagoners, come on on. Come on on. That guy has Jason Kelsey's mentality. I don't care. I'm playing. He was listed as out. He was listed as out. Did he have a great shooting night? No. But his presence on the floor impacted James Harden. Dude, let's just, I don't want to talk about percentages, how many shots he didn't make, or I don't, I want to do a Pat Riley conversation with you. Let me do something here. Write this down. This is what I think of Joel Embiid. Will. It gives me goosebumps. 
That stuff gives me goosebumps. He, he, he rolls out there on the court. He's getting hit. You imagine the concussion he's ha- he has, too, he's dealing with? Dude, <laughs> you go from Ben Simmons and having that guy, and you're looking at both of these dudes, and you're going like this. Man, you talk about the moon and the sun. Joel Embiid has got an old school mentality of playing through pain because he knows his team needs him. You know, I always say this to people. I wonder when athletes today make the kind of money you make, if you were making $35 million a year or $40 million a year, would you get up off your ass if you were hurt to go to work when you got so much money in the bank? Joel Embiid could have done what pretty much 95% of the NBA guys do. You know what that is? Just do a layup and say, I'm out. I'm sitting, He's got me watching that series. Dude, man. And Bede robbed? I agree. How about this, man? If I had to build my team around Joker, Giannis, the kid in Dallas, or in Bede, there's some pretty damn – John Morant? There's some pretty good players, man. But I'm going with the toughest dude. And you know what? It's between him and Giannis. Giannis and Embiid are the two dudes you build your team around. Those other European dudes, the guy in Utah and the guy in Dallas, are soft. Always bitching. Giannis and Embiid put their heads down. Carry their team. They get beat, they get beat. Dude, there's two old school mentalities with those two players. And you know what, man? Those guys got me going like this. It's fun to watch. It really is. 2-2. And how about it, too? James Harden showing up. Now the question will be, can Harden put back-to-back games together? He has them all year. Will he be able to do it? We'll see. Someone goes, what do you say now? Well, let's see. Hey, dude, welcome to the party. I'm not going to give James Harden kudos for showing up. James Harden's playing for a max deal. What are you, crazy? You see people now on Twitter and everywhere else going, well, hey, what do you say now about James Harden? Welcome to the party. Hey, thanks for showing up. I mean, come on, dog. Come on, dog. Let's go here, man. Right? All right. Philadelphia, I have a question for you. By the way, we got a bunch of topics today, too. So please hit the like button here. We appreciate you guys so much, man. I don't know if you have seen the video of Chris Paul's family getting abused at the Dallas Mavericks arena. Okay, I guess the mom got hit, the wife got hit, the kids saw it. It was really... The Philadelphia sports fan are the greatest people to ask this question. This is just for me, okay? Just for me. What do you feel you have the right to do? There's no other fan base in the country that this question can be asked to. Guys, what are your limits at a game at the link? I'm going to tell you this. You know what I said last night to a friend? If somebody had done that in front of a Philadelphia Eagle fan and it was the opposing family, I think the Eagle fans would have kicked that kid's ass and said, we don't do that here. It's one thing to boo. But I think you guys would have beat that kid's ass down right there if you were at Wells Fargo. If you were at Wells Fargo or if you were at the link, maybe I'm wrong. Tell me. Wouldn't you guys, as true sportsmen, the greatest fan base in the country who gets a bad rap, you're not going to punch or slap Chris Paul's mom and his wife in front of his kid. You're not going to do that. I don't believe that. I do not believe that. I think you guys would have thrown that guy in the stands and Ron Artest, that guy's ass. Am I wrong? 
I think you guys get such a bad rap. I was thinking last night when I watched that and saw that, I said, man, Sixer fans would have beat the shit out of that guy. You're not doing that to him. On Mother's Day? On Mother's Day to boot. Dude, no way. No way. No way. You ain't getting that over in Philly. No way. No way at all. Tell me I'm right. Now, you guys are going to give the business to Paul. And you guys would have given the business to the sons. But you're not going to go after somebody's family like that. I, 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 I just don't believe that. I just don't believe it. You guys would have killed that dude, man. Would have tied Domi to his ass. <laughs> and Randall, I love it. Dude, inadequate facts only, man. No moms at all, Clayton. Dude, I know that. I said, hey, man, on Mother's Day, too, you're not doing that in Philly. No way. You could say whatever you want about Michael Irvin laying there, this and that, what have you. Michael Irvin's wife and his kids are off limits to you guys. Michael Irvin's not. And Mike knows that. Get this. You know what Mike told me? Mike told me he was at the Super Bowl, and a Philadelphia Eagles sports fan came up to him and booed him when he was in L.A. And you know what Mike said? Thank you. Because you guys don't waste your time booing people who are nobodies. Mike looks at it like a merit badge that you guys even acknowledge his existence. You guys, he, he goes, to sales, man, I had a guy, two guys come up to me in an eagle. I thought they were going to fight me. And they just started booing me. I hated you. You know that? I hated you. I love what you do on the NFL Network. But I hate – Mike just says he started laughing going, man, those Eagle fans, man, they're everywhere too. Right? I was – I'm thinking to myself last night going, you guys would have killed that guy. Holy cow, man. You would have smoked that too. Man, D-Train, Philly fans are goons. We go to war, but leave the mom and children out of it. That's right, man. I, I'm learning this so much. I am. I'm so learning this, man. I love it. I love it. All right. Let's get into a main topic here now. You know, I, I, I'm seeing a lot of Jalen Hurts. I'm seeing a lot of the organization Excited about 2022. Let me, let's throw this out there. Do you have a problem with the, with, with the, do you have a problem with the optics that Jalen's only been given one year to prove it? Do you? Xander goes, seems like national media is buttering Eagles up a little too much. That's okay. <laughs> that'll all come that'll all come full circle in September. <laughs> okay? That'll all come full circle. And by the way, I think the schedule helps them out a lot. Remember what you guys said? Huh? Remember what you said? This football team's going to win 12 to 13 ball games this coming season. Jalen Hurts is going to throw for 4,200 yards. You guys set the bar last week. You guys have set the bar. That wasn't me talking on Friday. That was all of you. 4,200 yards and 13 and four. I didn't say it. You did. That's what you're expecting this coming season from your Eagles 2022. 13 and four, 4,200 yards, 25 touchdown passes. You said it. We all came to an agreement. But I ask you, the optics. Do you have a problem with not endorsing your quarterback? That's not an endorsement. Hey, he's got this year. That's not showing me any kind of love for my quarterback. 
That's just saying this. I don't have anybody else to replace you right now with. So the job is yours. You did enough last year for you to be able to have another shot this year. That's not a ringing endorsement. Okay? Strong says this. It's not one season, Sills. This is year three. How about this? Do we agree, Strong? It'll be more like a year and a half. No, it'll be two and a half years that he would have been given if he finishes the the season this year. Because it would have been last year, the half season before, and then it'd be this year too. It would be two and a half years, right? GT, right. Why one year? Wait a minute. I haven't heard the Eagle organization or the front office doing this. You know what? I don't see Jalen losing this job. This is going to be Jalen Hurts' job. And um, I see him being our guy for the next five or six years. Nobody in the front office at the NovaCare Center has even approached those kind of comments. They've been very careful. I went back and listened. I went back and listened. There hasn't been one person, Howie Roseman, Jeffrey Laurie, anybody who has come out and said, boy, he really looks like our future. He is our future. I've heard this. Jalen Hurts is our quarterback in 2022. That was almost verbatim what Howie Roseman said at the Combines. GT, that's my point. Who said one year? Well, why not say he's our quarterback moving forward? Instead of having this out there, he's got another one-year audition. It reminds me a lot of Kirk Cousins. When Cousins was in Washington, where every year he had to show up and prove that he was the guy, and eventually Washington, which they made a mistake, end up moving off of him because they haven't had a quarterback in the building since. Zach says he's only been a starter for one full season. Why are people talking about he's got a new coach having to learn a whole new playbook? Hey, Zach, welcome to football. And Zach, his coaches were Nick Saban, Lincoln Riley, Nick Sirianni. We're not talking about stiff coaches here. We're talking about the elite coaches in the world. It's not like he was playing ball at Temple. This guy was being coached by... Steve Sarkeesian, Lane Kiffin, Nick Saban, Lincoln Riley, Doug Peterson, and now Nick Sirianni. You're making it sound like he's not been coached by anybody. Or how about the quarterback room that he had in the wide receiver room he had at Alabama? It's not like he hasn't been around talented players, too. Jalen Hurts has been around the greatest coaches in the world. Different systems? Yes, I agree. It's like learning Portuguese in Japan. Or Japanese, excuse me. Absolutely, you're two different lingos. Two different terminologies. When you go from one team to another, you're, you're right. There is nuances that you have to change. But again, the front office has not endorsed him past one year. GT says it reminds me a lot of what Dak went through. You mad, bro? What's up, brother? I'm not saying he hasn't had any coaching. I'm saying he's had to learn new playbooks. Fair, Zach. I'm not saying that he's had bad coaches. Okay, you're right. You're right. There, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to dismiss that because there is something to that. And more so to the point, Zach, different play styling rhythms, the way offensive coordinators call games is completely a thing too. Doug Peterson and that coaching staff, the way they called plays versus Nick Sirianni and that coaching staff, the way that Lane Kiffin or the way that Sarkeesian, the way they called plays. Just because you have the same playbook doesn't necessarily mean the guy's got the same feel for the game. There is something to that. You're right. Okay? 
Like a guy on a third and one may want a quarterback sneak, but another guy says, I'd rather have it in the hands of my running back. Situational play calling all plays a factor. No matter what the playbook says, it's who's really utilizing the playbook. I get it. You're right. You're right. But for me now, again, I thought about it because there's a lot of goodwill going around now with the Eagles. A lot of people love them. Well, the Eagles don't really love Jalen all that much. If they haven't, in my point, given him a ringing endorsement. Is this is this fair? Let me see what Zach says. Exactly, Dan. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I agree. Zach, you're right. Okay? You're right. But 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 guys, listen and follow me here. It's not a real ringing endorsement, though, is it? How do you how do you, how do you guys look at it when it comes to the front office? Do you truly believe they're giving Jalen Hurts the ringing endorsement that he has a chance, really, of being the face of this franchise for the next ten years? Do they believe that? See, I'll tell you what. When you watch Josh Allen play up in Buffalo, Buffalo was saying this. I think we have somebody. And even when he was going through his second-year struggles, when I hear the Chargers talking, I hear the Chargers saying, Justin Herbert, man, he has a chance to be, he has a chance to be in the same line with Phillip Rivers and Dan Fouts. I, I, don't, I don't hear them saying this. Boy, I'll tell you. We really haven't had a franchise quarterback in Philadelphia since Donovan McNabb. And I think we have one here in Jalen Hurts. None of that's being said. Chuck has a great take here. Chuck, they don't want to make the same mistake they did with Wentz. Chuck, that's a great take. Chuck, it's a great take. It's a great take. So you think, Chuck, they're pumping the brakes. And what, hey, Chuck, Chuck, I think you just hit the topic on the, on the head here. The Eagles aren't look. well, they are. The Eagles are looking for improvement. But guys, would you say this? They're looking for more consistency out of Jalen. They're looking for more consistent. They want to see this, right? Maybe this, watch. It doesn't have to be that 4,800-yard passing year. It just has to be this. 9, 10, 11, 12 games. He's getting better passing. He's getting better reading. And he's consistently getting better and better and better and better and better. As long as we see, see that trajectory going like this, Right? They're going to stay on this rail. Am I right? Chuck, that's a great take. Okay? Okay, Craig. As long as they see this and it's content, they don't, what they don't want to see is like, here, am I right when I say this? Here was Wentz. Wentz was going like this. Then all of a sudden, after the injury and the coaching changes, it just started going like this. And it never leveled off. They, they were stunned because it was like, watch this, right? The contract gets signed. He's still moving up. He gets hurt in Los Angeles. And then all of a sudden, it just kept going down and down and down. And that consistency never brought it back. The Eagles were praying that he was going to make that swing up, that Josh Allen swing up. It never happened. GT, I don't think there is anything wrong with that. So the game plan, the game plan is to see him and the team and the players around him continuing to go on this trajectory. Long as we, and it doesn't have to be like this, right? It just has to be moving in a positive direction. Because here, watch this. If this kid ends up, Let's hypothetically do this. 11 and 6. Let's just say, for whatever reason, 
injuries, 11 and six. They win the East. He's 3,900, 21 touchdowns, 22 touchdowns, something like that. And he's gotten better. And there's a thousand yard wide out, maybe a hundred catch wide out for the first time in franchise history. The Eagles aren't going to balk off that, are they? Because I'm going to show you something, guys. Next year's NFL draft, I've already got the top 10 done. And I'm going to tell you just the top 10. I'm working on the rest of the draft. And I got the top 10 done. And this coming class is going to have some quarterbacks in it. They're going to have some quarterbacks in it. And Jalen Hurts is being given an opportunity here to keep these names. They got two first-rounders next year, almost kind of in the same position they were this year, kind of around the same room. But if you really wanted a quarterback bad enough, you could package up the draft choices and get into the top 10 and get a kid, right? Right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit on these guys here in a minute. By the way, I want to throw one more thing before we take a first time out here. Any interest in Jarvis Landry? I think he had like 570 yards last year, and he's looking for a home. Any interest in Jarvis Landry? Can you imagine having this? Jarvis Landry, Devontae Adams, A.J. Brown, Dallas Goddard. Jarvis Landry's not a one, but Jarvis Landry could be a two or a three. Okay? A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Jarvis Landry, Dallas Goddard, Miles Sanders, that old line. You add Jarvis Landry. Okay? Is Julio Jones still out there? One year deal. Yeah, one year deal. Is Julio still out there? That's right, Zach. You put Jarvis in that slot. You line your two dudes out wide. How'd you like to go to battle with that every weekend in the NFC East? Okay? And know this. He ain't going to be, he got cut. So he, you don't have to pick the contract up that he had in Cleveland. Only one ball. Yeah, but you know what you want with that one above all? Make the defense think who's getting it. You're right. One above all, there's only one football. But if I'm a defensive guy and I'm lined up, who's getting it? You got to keep me guessing who's getting it. What you had this year was maybe Devontae will get it. Now, I've got to do this. Jeez, oh man. You got Landry in the slot. A.J. over here can knock me out if I don't have my head on a swivel. Devontae running them routes. And you got Jalen who could take off running if he need be. And you got Miles Sanders, a very effective running back. That might make guys do this. All right. Let's play some zone here. Let's figure them out. Man, you ain't press coveraging those guys. The slot's wide open then. Then your tight end's running down the seam. Dallas Goddard going like this. In an offense like that, Dallas Goddard might have 125 catches. You think about that. David Gosills, do you stand for the entire show? I do. Yes, I do. I don't like sitting for shit. Jarvis Landry's an old timer? <laughs> Dude, man. That, that, hey, that offense, man, be the number one running attack. Least yards per carry here. Jarvis Landry. I thought about that guy. He's looking for a home. Put him on a one-year deal. He'll be auditioning for other teams around the league, and it would be a perfect situation because he only wants a one-year deal. You put him on them one of those Howie one-year prove-it-to-me deals, works out for both. Hey, right? 
OBJ's injured. I don't need that. I need Jalen to have all the tools today, not in November. Right, man? I mean, look. <laughs> what? Who are you defending? Oh, and by the way, then you say this also about Jalen Hurts. Hey, man. This guy had A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Jarvis Landry, and Dallas Goddard. He couldn't get it done? Nothing on us, man. Congratulations. We gave you two and a half years to be the starter here. Just didn't work out. We think you're going to be a star quarterback somewhere. It's just not what we're looking for. No disrespect, but we're moving on and we're going to go into the draft and get a quarterback. I don't think anybody would be upset with that comment. And God forbid he does pan out. Nobody wants to go backwards again. Hey, we're all rooting for the kid to win. Anybody who thinks that is stupid because I don't, I'm not sitting here open for Jalen Hurts to fail. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Got a great chance to do something here. Hey, don't sit back on your ass taking victory laps if you're Howie going around doing radio shows and coach calling in. You got some work to do, dude. You need a CB2. And to me, I, I, would, I wouldn't mind having another veteran wide out in the building. The more guys that you can get in the building helping that kid out, there's no crime in that. And he's not going to cost you a boatload of money. Maniac, what up, brother? Philip, hey, Sills. What's your take on the 6'9 tight end we signed? In the former center from Penn State. You know, Philip, um, these undrafted kids that end up getting signed, you end up finding really some fine players. Most of the time that you're finding depth, very seldom do you find a guy that's going to come in and make an impact, but it happens. Guys fall through the cracks all the time. The thing that I love about anything from Penn State, he's well-coached. Most of those kids are well-coached and well-disciplined. So that means he's going to bring a formula to the building, and he's going to be a somewhat pro stepping into the building. Always remember something, guys. When you're, when you're signing players, you want them to have the best coaching on the planet. That's why Josh Allen was so hard to dissect. Josh Allen was at Wyoming. Same thing with Carson Wentz, North Dakota State. What kind of coaching are you getting there? You know what's being said now about Trey Lance in San Francisco? He's not ready. Well, welcome to the big leagues, kid. Carson Wentz was kind of ready. The reason Carson Wentz looked better than Trey Lance was because he played more ball because there wasn't COVID-19 out there. Trey Lance got hosed by that and has had limited football, but he's also had limited coaching. Limited coaching. That's why you, that's why you always sign guys from great programs because the best coaches in the country are there. Philip, I'd like to have that guy in the red zone. Jarvis Landry, A.J. Brown, Dallas Goddard, Boy, my offense looks better than Dallas already. Remember, that's the team you got to beat. That's the team you got to beat. You know, I, I did a way too soon um, top 10 2023 mock draft. I went and started looking at it. I didn't put the teams there because how would I know where they finish? I don't know. People are talking Lions and Jags and Falcons and all that in the top 10? Probably so, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put my top 10 players and I'm going to put them in this respected order. And I'm going to do that here in a second. Guys, do me a favor. Please hit the like button. We really appreciate it. Don't forget, proud sponsors of the National Football Show and Big Sales is Morgan & Morgan. This is where the fee is free. And you know what this means? If you're hurt or injured on the job, know this. Finding an attorney is one of the most important things you could possibly do for you and your family when it comes to getting the fair compensation. For the people is not just a slogan. It is who they are. It is what they do. Past 30 years, Morgan & Morgan has recovered $13.5 billion for their clients, making sure that you guys get the fair compensation. And remember something else. Size matters. They're the biggest law firm 
when it comes to personal injury in the United States, which means they will not be intimidated and they will get you your fair compensation. With over 800 attorneys and offices in Philadelphia, New York, Florida, all across the country, the army of attorneys that Morgan & Morgan has for you are going to do battle for you, making sure you get that fair compensation. The call is free, 800-512-1600. That's 800-512-1600. The consultation is free, 800-512-1600. And when you call Morgan & Morgan, do me a favor, tell them Big Sill sent you. When choosing a lawyer for your injury case, you may ask, does the size of the law firm matter? Well, of course it does. The insurance company, they're huge with unlimited resources. And whether your case is big or small, they're built to bully you out of the money you're owed. But here's the good news. We're big too, the biggest actually. And we're built to fight to make them pay for all that was taken from you. Size is our strength. There's only one Morgan & Morgan, forthepeople.com. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Android TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24 7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. The big story on action. Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. In Philadelphia, we celebrated the miracle with pride only five years ago. And then the following morning, IBEW Local 98 members went back to work, building this city, rescuing our communities from decay, and inspiring the young men and women of the region to take pride in who we are. Like the cats, Local 98 members believe in hope. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and career opportunities with Local 98, visit us, ibew98.org. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. What's that? Uh, a rocks glass? You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Holy shit. The glass is for cocktails, right? It's for this, this, this. And that. Is the length of the glass equal to your... You betcha. But is it made out of... Glass? Okay, but is the rim... Smooth? Will you stop doing... That? I'm the professional here. And you're telling me I can get one of these glasses for free? That's right. One free rocks glass per customer with each first-time purchase of Stateside Vodka. All from the company that's highly awarded. Zero cars, zero sugar, and deliciously tasting vodka. So good, it just disappears. Appreciate everybody coming aboard. Please hit the like button. Gary Cobb, as he always joins us on a Monday from Fox 29, will join us at 4.30 Eastern time in hour number two. I want to throw this at you guys. So before we get into my way too early 2023 top 10 mock NFL draft, there's quarterbacks in the top 10. Okay? There's quarterbacks in the top 10. But... I, I, I want to show you how a coach bullshits people. So Pete Carroll was on a radio station in Seattle. And he said if Drew Locke had gone into this year's draft, he would have been the number one quarterback selected. That's the first sign of dementia. 
That's off-season coaches talk. This guy's great. Oh, my God. I can't believe – nobody believes it in the locker room when you start doing stuff like that. Nobody buys that. Nobody is going to buy that he's going to be the heir apparent to Russell Wilson. You're overcooking it. The great coaches sit back and just let it play out. Players know what's in the room. Why would you do that? Was that for the fan base? Is Why would Pete Carroll lie like that? It's a blatant lie. Drew Locke sucks. He's terrible. He's a bust. He's a bridge. Blake Bortles and him have more in common than Drew Locke and Russell Wilson. And actually, the only thing Drew Locke and Russell Wilson have in common, they played for the Seahawks. That's it. And quarterback. I agree, Chris. Pete Carroll needs to call it a career. Because let me tell you this. As he goes out the door, Carroll right now is a Hall of Fame coach. A couple more of those shitty seasons in Seattle without Russell Wilson. Pete Carroll will be George Seifert. So you might want to look at it because what do they say? You know, when you're a legend and you're legendary, don't wear out your welcome because you'll be looked at as a villain in the end. So what happened to Paterno. Should have bailed 10 years earlier. Got out. His, his history and legacy would have been intact. But these guys' egos, look at Pete. Pete thinks he could put Humpty Dumpty back together again in Seattle. Look what's going on in New England. I mean, Bill Belichick has a good team, but do you think he'll ever have a Brady team? No. So you know what he's doing? He's running down Don Shula. He's got his six championships. Now he wants to run down Don Shula for the most wins in the regular season. That's the only reason he's in it. Jesus Christ, I heard that and I was like, come on, man. Drew Locke is terrible. It's another Paxton Lynch. John Elway, screw up. John Elway, the Brock Osweilers of the world. The only thing he got right in Denver was the veteran quarterbacks that wanted to play there. He couldn't draft to save his life a quarterback. John Elway has no understanding of the position when it comes to evaluating the quarterback position. Who would have ever thought that? Paxton Lynch, Drew Locke, Brock Osweiler, Tim Tebow. I mean, really? This guy's had nothing in the draft. You could not in any way look at John Elway and go, that guy knows how to find a quarterback. Bill Belichick has found better quarterbacks than John Elway. (laughs) Crazy, man. I want to show you this. This is a rough draft of the top 10 players that are going to be in next April's draft. I want you to listen to the quarterbacks. Okay? Okay. Will Levis will be the number one player taken in the draft, a quarterback from Kentucky. I think it's Levis. He's going to be the number one player taken. Every single personnel person that I've talked about, get this, he's in the same conference as Bryce Young. Thinks that this kid will be the number one player taken, the quarterback from Kentucky. The QB from Kentucky will be the number one player selected. Number two, Jalen Carter, another Georgia D lineman who people are saying could be better than every guy that went in this year's draft. Number three, quarterback, CJ Strong, Ohio State. Is third. Number four, University of Miami, O-lineman, Zion Nelson. He's 6'7", 335. 
and he is a beast. Actually, Miami's got two guys in the top 10 this year. Number five, Bryce Young, quarterback, Bama. So when the top five picks, three quarterbacks will be selected as of today and next April's NFL draft. Two Southeastern Conference quarterbacks, too. Think of that. And the reigning Heisman Trophy winner is not one that's going number one overall. Number six, Will Anderson, linebacker, Bama. Number seven, Tyler Van Dyke, quarterback, Miami. So in the top seven picks, you got four QBs going. You got a big room for Howie Roseman next year. If this guy screws up, by the way, I'll take that back. Not if Jalen screws up, if he doesn't perform well enough. Number eight, Miles Murphy, D.E. Clemson. Number nine, Panay Sewell's brother, Noah Sewell, linebacker, Oregon. And number 10, Xander knows this name, Eli Ricks, cornerback, Bama. Bama's going to have three dudes go in the top 10 next year as of today. And you know someone's going to rear their head this coming season that could maybe get themselves in the top 10. This is where the big money is, is in the top 10. These are the top 10 players, according to Bledsoe. The scouting service combine that that gives these lists to all the teams and then the teams, front offices, and pro personnel departments take that list and then start dissecting it. So Kentucky quarterback will be number one. C.J. Stroud, number three. Bryce Young, number five. And Tyler Van Dyke, number seven from the University of Miami. You got four quarterbacks. Howie's got two first-round picks. Okay? The Eagles are in a pretty damn good place right now. Think of that. Think of where they are. Is Jalen Hurts better than any of these prospects coming out? That kid at Kentucky, man, I went back and watched. He's got some real. And he has nowhere near the talent. that You put that quarterback from Kentucky at Alabama, he might throw for 100 touchdowns. That kid is really special. The kid Van Dyke will see how he performs with Mario Cristobal. I see good things. He really had a great year when he he went in there and he took over for the injured quarterback. When he went in there for De'Ar King, I thought he really did well. The Eagles have two first-round draft choices. And if Jalen Hurts does not perform enough, and like you said last week, remember this, what we're saying here. Like you said last week, okay, we've got to see 12 and 5, 13 and 4, 4,200 pass, 4,200 passing yards, and more importantly, those wide receivers that they have on their team today, and Devontae and A.J. Brown, and even Dallas Goddard, you just gave him a contract extension. These guys have to improve. Dallas Goddard, was. would we agree with this? Hold on, Philly. See, Philly goes like this. Relax. Sills, relax. No. Not going to relax. No, no, no. Our Anthony, I'm not stirring anything. I'm having a conversation here. And again, did you not hear me in the last block? I'm not saying that Jalen's going to fail. I'm saying the room is set and how he set this up. And this is why this dude's taking victory last because he can't lose. 
If Jalen F's up, okay, we're going to package something up with Jalen Hurts. I'll go up in the top 10 and get one of these quarterbacks. This is not wishing failure. In the NFL, what does the draft, hey, what does the draft tell you about having multiple plans? Did you see Jerry Jones get exposed? No, 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 not on Harry Hines either. No, no, no. Jones had the card in his hand and somebody took a snapshot of it and it had all the pictures of the Giants having taken the Cowboys picks. Hey, and, 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 and the, the Giants took every one of Jerry's picks in the first round. He wanted both of those guys. And Jerry kind of exp- – but he had to have multiple plans. The Eagles have to be preparing for this. Okay. Sec one, do the opposite of relax. 500 promised me the honey badger. I want the real takes. Goddard, keep dropping balls. I like Dallas Goddard. Okay. Have your act together. William, that's right. Have your act together. Seals, what do you think Hurts' ceiling can be if he keeps improving? Xander, put that up there. That's a good one. Jack, I'm liking your stuff today. Seals, what do you... Watch this. You see these quarterbacks here that are going to go in the first round? You know what I think their ceiling is? All pro. Matthew, it is a good question. With the talent on the team right now, too, right? No way, McNabb. No way. No way. No way. No way. No way. No way. You see Jalen Hurts and Donovan McNabb and Donovan, no way. No way. Kyle, I don't think the Saints are going to be that bad. I think they're going to be productive. Jameis Winston was 5-1 and one before he got hurt, and he was his quarterback rating was actually better than Brady's. Booz is right. Well, he can throw, but he can't throw the deep pass. Mariota, uh, William, you think that Jalen Hurts is Steve McNair. Uh, <laughs> McNair's better than McNabb. Okay. If you asked me who I would take, Steve McNair or Donovan McNabb, I would take Steve McNair. Okay. I I I just there's I'm a Mc I'm I'm a McNair guy. I, I do. Steve McNair, in my opinion. Man, Steve McNair to me is was a tough ass dude. Saints lost Sean Payton, play caller. Now you have a defensive-minded guy in the building. Is that going to play a factor? Yes, it will. Chris goes, you know what's funny here? Look at this. Chris says that Jameis Winston is a turnover machine. That's because I thought that Bruce Arians' offense was a turnover machine-prone type system. No risk it, no biscuit. You're throwing the ball plus 25 the majority of the game. What do you think you're going to get? You're going to get a boatload of turnovers. That's why Brady had to talk him out of it. It was Brady who was the guy who was compromising and told Bruce, dude, the underneath passes is how I've made a living and winning Super Bowls. After that Bucks team was 7-5 and five 
They couldn't keep throwing the ball down the field. They couldn't. Yeah, and William, he also threw for over 30 touchdowns. I get he's the original 30 for 30 guy. 30 touchdowns, 30 picks. I get it. <laughs> okay? Matthew says Jalen does. Matthew, I'm going to completely disagree here. Let's get, let, listen to what Matthew says here. Matthew, Jalen doesn't have to win games with his arm because of the players around him. He does, though, Matthew. He does. The Philadelphia Eagles last year was a one-dimensional football team. When you guys tried to be more versatile, you were 2-5. and five. You were 2-5. and five. Okay? D says, Hurts wins division, but low passing yards. What are you doing? God. D, another great take. You're upgrading. You've got to upgrade, D. If you win the division, but your quarterback's not good enough to beat teams in the AFC, let alone barely beat teams in the NFC, you have to upgrade the position. I'm not going to go with a lesser quarter. Here, would you guys agree? I just thought this. Okay? Drew goes like this. Sorry, Dan, we were not versatile when we were two and five. I know this. You were throwing the ball 38 times a game. Then you stopped doing that and ran the ball 30 times a game. And that's how you guys turned yourself into a contender for a playoff seat. Okay? Susan, I love the quarterback from Kentucky, too. Let me ask you guys something. I think this goes right down the line of Jalen Hurts. You think Ryan Tannehill stops the Tennessee Titans from winning a Super Bowl? What do you guys think? You have the best runner in the NFL since Adrian Peterson's prime. And before that, probably Emmett and Barry. And dominant, a force running back like that, maybe Earl Campbell. Steven, good afternoon to you, my friend. So, Ryan Tannehill, you think holds the Titans back from beating the elite teams in the postseason, right? Hey, D-Train, so is Jalen a decent quarterback. Look at what a decent quarterback did to the number one seed once they got to the playoffs. What happened? They got bounced in the opening round. Do you know that the top, excuse me, no, that ain't true. They got bounced in the divisional round, didn't they? Because the Titans had to buy last year. Holy cow, I forgot that. The Tennessee Titans had to buy and then got bounced. Ryan Tannehill is the reason they got bounced. If Derrick Henry gets shut out, he ain't winning ball games. It's the same thing in Philly. Your running game stops. He ain't throwing you into a playoff game or into another round. Jalen Hurts ain't throwing you into the AFC or the NFC championship game if you if your team gets bounced or uh, stuffed and you can't run the ball. See, when you're in Cincinnati and you got Joe Mixon and you got Joe Burrow, those dudes are going to move the sticks if one part of the team gets shut down. Same thing in Los Angeles with the Chargers, Kansas City, Oak, or Las Vegas. Rams. I think this is going to be an issue up in um, Green Bay. We'll see if they're going to be able... Hey, by the way, you hear the latest news? Don't let Jarvis Landry or Julio Jones go to Green Bay. They're looking for a veteran wideout. You imagine Julio Jones and Aaron Rodgers? 
Hey, I would say this to you. The chances of the Eagles beating that team in Green Bay, not too good. Oh, by the way, you'll get a chance because that could happen because the Packers come to the link. Packers come to the link. They got Julio Jones or Jarvis Landry on that team with Aaron Rodgers. Be another 13 and 3 team again or 13 and 4. Right? Man, can you imagine Julio? Here, here, but you know, Xander goes like this his health has been an issue, especially his, his calves and his shins. I would do what Shannon Sharp said. I'd play him 13 games, man. I'd rest this guy because I need this guy in the back end of my schedule, not the front end. I don't need Julio Jones going for 13, 1,400 yards. I need Julio Jones being Julio Jones in the postseason, catching them passes healthy. That's when I need his ass. I could develop these other guys, especially me playing in the North. I'm all good. Got Minnesota to concern yourself with, but Chicago and the Lions, not too worried about them dudes. So I get some latitude to develop guys if I'm Aaron Rodgers. Again, Vikings, I'm concerned. Vikings have some players. Davey Boy goes, Julio's wash. Yeah, with Ryan Tannehill, he would be. Oh, by the way, I got to tell you something. Do you guys think that fantasy football matters? I'm not a real fantasy football playing guy. But I'm going to tell you what some of the people on ESPN said about your wide receiving core. <laughs> okay. And I, I, I've been talking about, I've been talking about um, Ryan Tannehill here. Hey, by the way, don't forget Gary Cobb, 430 Eastern time. Please hit the like button. Keep it right here on the National Football Show. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Android TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24 7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. The big story, and that can search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. In Philadelphia, we celebrated the miracle with pride only five years ago. And then the following morning, IBEW Local 98 members went back to work, building this city, rescuing our communities from decay, and inspiring the young men and women of the region to take pride in who we are. Like the cats, Local 98 members believe in hope. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and career opportunities with Local 98, visit us, ibew98.org. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. What's that? Uh, a rocks glass? You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Holy shit. Glasses for cocktails, right? It's for this, this, this. And that. Is the length of the glass equal to your... You betcha. But is it made out of... Glass? Okay, but is the rip... Smooth? Will you stop doing... That? I'm the professional here. And you're telling me I can get one of these glasses for free? That's right. One free rocks glass per customer with each first-time purchase of Stateside Vodka. All from the company that's highly awarded. Zero cars, zero sugar, and deliciously tasting vodka. So good, it just disappears. Hour number two. 
National Football Show with your boy, Big Seals, bottom of the hour. Gary Cobb, Fox 29, will be with us also tomorrow. You know what we're going to do? I want to talk to a former MVP of the NBA, and he is my NBA expert, one of the top 20 players in the history of the game. Rick Barry's going to join us. And I'll ask Rick if MB got hosed out of the MVP award. I think he did. Joker now, I think he's like, what, the seventh guy to go back to back? Do you know that Joker now has more regular season MVP awards than Kobe Bryant? <laughs> okay. All right. He's got more regular season MVPs now than Kobe. Okay. Right? That's a good one, Chris. My wife asks me that all the time. Sills, why are you yelling? <laughs> 007. Okay. So what about the great quarterbacks who developed in, on the bench for two years? Steve Young was not a great thrower. Great receivers and running game and could run. You think Jalen has the same skill set that Steve Young has? That I don't see. Okay, Paul's like, I'll take the NBA championship over the MVP any day. I'll take the finals MVP over the regular season MVP is what you're saying, like Giannis last year. Okay, fair enough. I love Giannis too, man. My, he's an old school player, so is Embiid. I started the show out, dude, okay? Guys, I got to tell you, man. Dude, Embiid is such an old school guy. I love him. Broken face, broken hand. Let me go out for my boys. Let me go out and play with my boys. Let me tie this series up. I'm not going to be Embiid, but I'm going to be out there for, with him. It inspired everybody. It inspired even James Harden. God, that's so good when you see a guy that you know is banged up and he's just playing. And he's out there giving it his all. That's why when those quarterbacks get hit the way they do, and you got a guy on your football team that's getting knocked around like that, and he's getting banged up, and he's playing like that, dude, it, 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 it energizes you. When you see a guy taking hits, and he just dusts himself off, no matter what the sport is, goes to work. You know what some of you would say, too? Hey, Sills, I get up off my ass every day and I go to work for my family. I don't get any days off either. That's why you guys identify with people like Joel Embiid and Jason Kelsey. That's why people in Philly or guys like Larry Bird in Boston, that's why people are drawn to them. I'm drawn to people like that, that have an everyday guy mentality that go to work, no matter what it is, no nights off, I'm banged up, cracked face, broken hand, I'm going to work. You know, you 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 look past the fact he's making five hundred thousand dollars a night. I get it. All you want, man, is just a guy to go out there and give it his all. You got a guy in Brooklyn who got his feelings hurt in Philly who won't step on the court. Then he calls it depression. We're all depressed. I'm sick of that. I'm sick of that stuff. We're all depressed. Get over it. We're all depressed. We all have issues. We all don't want to get up and go to work. We all don't want to do that. But hey, guess what? You know what? I'm depressed too. But I got to go. I got to go to work. Right? Part of life, man. Bryant says, ceiling is Air McNair, Bryant. Well, let me tell you what your, um, those fantasy dudes, as I was coming on the air, that guy Barry and a couple of the um, ESPN fantasy guys said this about your wide receiving core. Well, A.J. Brown's taking a downgrade, going to the Eagles. That's why he's not a top 10 fantasy football player and won't have the numbers. He's had in the past. Oh, 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 this is gambling. So the fantasy guys 
You guys keep telling me the Eagles have a great wide receiving duo. Fantasy football people don't think that the Eagles have one player in the top 10. <laughs> wait, wait, what do you mean? The Eagles, according to the fantasy football dudes, hey, Brandon, I'm with you. Brandon, I'm with you, but people play it for a reason. They're saying this. It's a downgrade for A.J. Brown coming to Philly. I heard the dude say it. That guy, Barry? No, 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 William. No, 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 no. <laughs> hey, William. Well, wait a minute, William. Wait a, wait a minute. They are gamblers. <laughs> Davey boy, I don't listen. Fantasy. The only thing fantasy I listen to is porn. I'm kidding. Okay. But no, those fantasy dudes don't think that you guys have a decent wide receiver that's going to get a boatload of yards. They're not saying they're not good players. They're just saying they're not going to have a lot of production. It's a downgrade from Tannehill to Hertz. That's a really great point, though. Can, I, I got to do this. How about this? In your fantasy football league, would you draft any wide receiver from Philly? Would you draft any wide receiver? Who plays fantasy football here? Would you draft any Philly wide receiver? Nope. <laughs> Half those fantasy guys. <laughs> they was off on Hertz last year until his first game. You would draft GT, you would? Okay, well, let me ask something here. A.J. Brown stats. Let me see here what A.J. AJ Brown has done since he's been in Tennessee. Here we go. A.J. Brown. Receiving. Here we go. A.J. Brown had 1,051. In 19, 1,075. In 20, 869. Oh, he had 1,000 yards last year because he missed some. He's still at 1,000. Um, you think he duplicates these numbers in Philly? AJ's going to have 1,100 yards and 10 touchdowns. You think AJ, hey, you think AJ Brown, you think AJ Brown has a thousand yards and a hundred catches? I love this topic. I love this. Okay. So this is what, hey, it's Xander. D dude. So last Friday, <laughs> 13 and four. 4,200 yards and 25 touchdowns. A.J. Brown, receptions and yards and TDs. What's he have this year? How many receptions does A.J. Brown? 100 catches? No. How many, how many receptions does A.J. Brown have with Jalen Hurts as his quarterback? Randall says 88 and 11, 20, and nine touchdowns. Are we good with that? You guys are going to set the bar on this one too. I'm going to go through. Jermaine says 75. 800 yards and 75 receptions. Sylvan, thank you. D-Train. So I think, look, 89. <laughs> Eight, 89 receptions, 1,100 yards, and nine TDs for A.J. Brown. By the way, I think that's the most catches in Eagle history. 
for a wide receiver. 1,200 yards, 1,100 yards, 80 catches, 9 TDs. I think we're right there. 80 catches, 1,200, 1,100. Okay, I got 89 catches for 1,109. We're good? Devontae Smith, this is fun. This is a blast. I love doing this. How many receptions, yards, and TDs? Okay, if not, fire Sirianni. Booza says too high. Hey, you guys, hey, wait, 13 and four, 4,200 passing yards and 25 touchdowns for Jalen. Man, you guys are really <laughs> setting the bar. Hey, I might as well ask after this, how good do you think that defense is going to do? It's signed to basically first round draft choices, right? Jalen, 85 and 1,200. Smith, 69 for 1,020. 68 for 1,150. So what you guys are saying, if I'm getting it right here, Smith is probably going to have more yards per catch. AJ is going to have more receptions because he's going to be thrown to more on third down. Makes sense. 78 catches, 1,000 yards, Chris. Okay. 70 catches, 11. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I think you guys are right. I'm okay with that. 75 catches. I'm with you. One above all. 1,000 a a yards. How many TDs? You got nine touchdowns already. Be careful now here. Let's not go crazy. Cooper just caught 140 balls, and these dudes want 66. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. Well, that quarterback in Los Angeles has a Super Bowl winning arm. This kid ain't got that yet. Bryant, you think 12 touchdown catches for Devontae Smith? I think that's a little too high. Let's be within reason here. Would it be okay if I said this? Six. 75 catches, 1,000 yards, six touchdowns. Your other guy's got almost 10. What about Ertz? Eh, when we work on the Cardinals, I'll get to Ertz. <laughs> I think you mean Goddard, but Okay. Dallas Goddard. Brandon says, for all this to happen, Hertz needs to have a season compared to Dak. Absolutely, Brandon. 3,000-yard receivers, that's correct. Okay? That's correct. Dallas Goddard. How many catches does Dallas Goddard have in yards and touchdowns? You guys are really setting the bar here. How, how many? So you got one receiver right now with 89 catches, another one with 75, one with 1,100 yards, and the other with 1,050. So at your Y and Z position, you basically have 15 touchdowns, 2,100 yards, and around 170 catches. <laughs> Let's see Dallas Goddard. 55 catches, 800 yards. And eight touchdowns? So let's see. Between these three what between these three dudes here. There's 24 touchdowns. 3,000 yards passing with three guys. And basically 200 and something catches. So do you understand what you're expecting this year from your dudes? 
You're expecting your team to go 13 and four, win the division, your quarterback to go 42 25, 4,225 touchdowns, AJ Brown to go almost 90 catches, 1,100 yards, and nine touchdowns. Devontae Smith, 75 catches and 1,050 with six TDs. And Dallas Goddard, 55 catches with 800 and eight touchdowns. Well, let me just say this to you. If Dallas Goddard gets eight touchdowns, he'll lead all tight ends, in my opinion. GT, stop putting words in our mouth. I'm way here. No. <laughs> No. Wait a minute. No, you, that's a lie. We did that on Friday. We went over the schedule. You guys said 13 wins. I got it documented. I didn't say any of that. Jimmy says that's a pipe dream. I didn't say that. Steven says 45 catches, 350. No way. You said 4,200 yards. Eh, I don't know about that. I don't know. I like us at 11. Eh, that's not what we did. That's not what we did. <laughs> Whoa, man. So you think you're going to have three receivers counting your tight end, two receivers counting your tight end, 3,000 yards. You got the quarterback to do that. How many, how many teams had two wide receivers on it with 1,000 yards? Bengals? Hell, I don't even think the Rams did. Because what's his name? Woods got hurt, right? How many how many teams had a thousand two thousand yard wideouts last year? But the Eagles are gonna are the Eagles are gonna have two. I gotta take a look at this. <laughs> I don't know. Uptown says Yak will help this team a lot, especially if the receptions are tart. Yeah, but Uptown, he hasn't shown yet where he's accurate. Goddard had 800 yards. And he had to split time with Ertz a little bit last year. Jimmy says unrealistic. Cut that in half. It's still too high. That's what John says. Since he in Dallas? Since he in Dallas had C.D. Lamb? There's only two two teams last year that had thousand yard two wide receivers last year, right? Davy Boyd, the Chargers did too. Um, Keenan Allen and uh, Mike Williams. Three K for Goddard, Brown, and Smith. Total sixty five hundred for Quez. Dude, you're talking about a forty five hundred yard passing quarterback then. Boosie says, Sills, listen, Levin wins at max, 33 passing yards. Well, that ain't going to keep his job. I'll tell you guys, Boza, if Jalen Hurts for throws under 3,600 yards, he won't keep his job. They'll upgrade. And they'll do this. He didn't suck. But they're going to upgrade. They're going to go get one of these quarterbacks I talked about. They're going to upgrade. That's why they didn't draft a quarterback, man. And weren't really thinking about because they knew this class. I didn't realize you got four quarterbacks going in the top 10. Howie was going to, dude, and I'll tell you this too. If I were Howie and I saw things were going kind of not the way I wanted it to be going at my quarterback position, I might, I might package up Fletcher Cox as I get close to the trading deadline take on some of that money and get me a third round draft choice and package it up so that I could put Jalen a first rounder and a third rounder to try to go up and move up into the top 10. 
get Va- Ch- uh, Tyler Van Dyke, Bryce Young, the kid from Kentucky, or C.J. Stroud. This guy's going to know immediately. He's going to know immediately, man. Yeah, man, I got to tell you. A lot of guys out there, man, taking victory laps. Taking victory laps out there for the Eagles. Let's bring in our friend Gary Cobb from Fox 29. Gary, a lot of guys taking victory laps in Philly, man. They got the season all right, ready to go, all primed, 1,000-yard wide receivers. It's funny. I I asked somebody, A.J. Brown coming to Philadelphia, and the fantasy guys are even saying that he's going to take a step backwards here. Who? There are going to be four quarterbacks selected. Let me read them to you, Gary. There are going to be four quarterbacks selected in the top ten next year. And this is from our friends at Bledsoe, the scouting mm-hmm. service that all teams use. Yeah. Will Levis from Kentucky, C.J. Stroud, Ohio State, Bryce Young, Bama, Tyler Van Dyke, Miami. What does Jalen Hurts have to do, in your opinion, to not have Howie Roseman use one of those first rounders next year and package up a deal to go into the top 10 and get himself a quarterback. What is Well, he you know, he's got to look like a franchise quarterback. That means, you know, with these weapons he's got, he's got to be putting the ball on the money. You know, you got to see some 350 yard games where it's not junk yards. No, it's competitive stuff, you know, uh, where he, he's doing it against a good defense and they need these yards in order to win the football game. And he's competing against, you know, the better quarterbacks in the league where he is playing, you know, at the level of a franchise quarterback. So, um, you know, you look at the, the, the quality quarterbacks in the league, you know, with, with Brady and, and, and uh, of course, uh, Rodgers. And, you know, you look at, the you know, the guys um, – uh, you know, throughout the league, the ones that are the marquee quarterbacks, he's got to be near them, uh, you know, and he's got to show that, you know, if he's not all the way there, he's just, let's say, a hair underneath there, but he shows he is going to be a franchise quarterback. Gary, does he have to be better than Dak? I think I think he needs to be, for what, the way Dak played last year, I think he's got to be better than that, you know? Um but I think he's got to do, he's got to put those kind of numbers where you're talking about, you know, 4,000 yards passing, you know, I, I think he's got to be up there because I know Sirianni likes to throw the ball. So if he sees something, he's going to go after it through the air, even though, you know, they got an outstanding running tack. He wants to throw the ball because I think he believes just like Jeffrey Lloyd believes that, you win with the passing game now in the NFL. Now, you could do it in different ways where, you know, you, you can you can take over the ball and, you know, teams, especially, they got to honor the Eagles running game. So there are going to be opportunities there. You got the weapons. So he has got to put up a franchise quarterback type year where he's throwing 30 touchdowns, 10 or less interceptions, you know, because he's got that running game. He's got an outstanding offensive line, and he's got all the weapons a quarterback could want. You know, Gary, I want to throw this at you, too. We had um, Keith Byers on on Friday. Mm -hmm. It's funny how the organization has taken a transformation from the Norman Brayman days to the Jeffrey Lurie days in the fact that I I asked Keith, I said, do you think they gave Randall – everything that he needed to be successful. And he said this, man, we had a deal all signed up and ready to go with Jim Lachey when Jim Lachey was getting ready to be traded. And at the end of the day, the owner didn't want to spend the money. And that's why Reggie ended up leaving. And I find it funny that today, the benchmark of the Philadelphia Eagle teams has been the offensive line. It's been a true shift from going out and finding skilled guys to really making sure that they're really an emphasis on the meat and potato guys in both lines. You think that's by design? Yeah, I definitely think it's by design. You know, I think that this is their formula for winning. And, you know, they won, um, you know, a few years back, they won with that formula where 
they were strong up front. They had even gone out and got some guys, you know, uh, like Chris Long near the end of his career. They had quality on the offensive and defensive lines. And they said, well, if, if we're winning up front, our people in back are going to be able to win. They don't have to be the best, but they're going to be able to play that much better if, if we're winning the battle up front on both sides of the line of scrimmage. And that proved to be true. And I think it's true because if you've got a quarterback and he's got time, you know, if he doesn't have time, you he got to be great. You know, and you know, you got certain guys that have been able to do, you know, play at uh, elite levels behind, you know, garbage offensive lines like Russell Wilson. He did that for years. And that's one of the reasons he wanted out of Seattle because he was tired of it, you know. Plus, you know, um, you know, they didn't really – feature him as much as he wanted to. But, you know, uh, uh, Jalen is going to have to do this this year. He's got to shine, man. I mean, you know, he's, I hear he's working out. He's trying to do and prepare himself to be a guy that comes out there and shines. But he knows he's got to shine, man, because they got those quarterbacks sitting there in the next draft. And the Eagles are going to be salivating at them, even if he has a good year. They're going to be tempted to draft one of them anyway. I know, and, and, and that that leads me to my topic to you. I yeah. started to show up by saying this. I go, does it? Would it bother you if you were a quarterback? Would it bother you if you were a player that the organization has made it almost an emphasis, Gary, to only make sure that they did not extend any of their comments past the twenty twenty two year? Hey, Jalen, even at the combines. Jalen's our quarterback. 2022 is going to be a year for him to shine. No one's mentioned anything beyond it. I know maybe they got a little lesson taught to them by the Wentz deal. I understand all that. But would it bother you if you were Jalen or a player that the organization hasn't fully committed to you? Well, uh, yeah, it's going to be something that bothers, bothers you, something that's a challenge to you. But I think he would have to admit he has not sewn down the deal. You know, he didn't sew it down where he didn't go out and just. So his shine. performance last year did not solidify his stay as the quarterback of the Eagles, in your opinion. Clearly it didn't because, see, where the Eagles are at now, they measure everything by a Super Bowl. When they won that Super Bowl, everything's going to be measured by the Super Bowl. Now, the way that they played and he played against Tampa Bay, does that look like a guy who can win a Super Bowl for you? The way he played against Tampa Bay in that playoff game? No. So I don't think he would have any argument with that. I think he knows he's got to get better. He has to play better. And I hope he does. I, you yeah. know, He's got the weapons to do it, man. Absolutely. Jarvis Landry, I threw this out too also. How important would it be to add another veteran wide receiver? Can you imagine this? Look at this, Gary. Yeah. You got both your wideouts. You have Jarvis Landry. You have A.J. Brown. Or you have Devontae. And A.J. Brown, and you put Jarvis Landry in the slot, and you've got a tight end in Dallas Goddard. Would you would, would, would you be open? Do you think they're thinking about adding another guy into the mix? Because, again, you're like you said, they're building this team for somebody. Yeah. It's either Jalen Hurts or it's someone else. Why yeah. not put as much talent as you possibly can? And you could give Jarvis because he probably only wants a one-year contract. One mm -hmm. of those Howie Roseman prove it to me deals. That's right. You bring his ass in here. Yeah. And if Jalen's not the guy, you're going to know immediately. Even isn't isn't the 2022 season not just about winning the East, but it's about finding out as quick as we can if Jalen's the guy. Oh, clearly. I mean, it, it's probably more priority to find out about Jalen than to win the NFC East. You know because. You know, that's going to have more to do that with well, how good is Dallas. You know, let's say the Eagles, if, if they could win, uh, you know, 10, 11 games, you know, and that's great and everything. But they want to find out about this quarterback situation, you know, because, you know, it, it, it's something about the way they built this team. And remember, when they won, you know, a few years back when they won, they didn't have one quarterback. They had two quarterbacks, you know, and the reason they won – you know, some people still say stuff and everything, even, you know, people that are fans of, of Jalen, they go, oh, we don't need to bring in another guy. Look, 
when they won the Super Bowl, they didn't have two quarterbacks. They would not have won the Super Bowl. Agreed. They had two. They had two quarterbacks. So, you know, especially if you could get a young guy who's who's not who's not who's not making the big bucks, then you can afford it. You can afford to get a young quarterback. See, that's that's the thing, and that's why uh, that's one of the reasons that allows them to do that type of thing. But we'll see what we'll see what happens. But I think clearly we are going to know whether he's the guy or not because he is going to be featured and they got all the weapons great offensive line you know a, a true number one and aj brown and you got Devonte smith coming into his own and you got you know good tight end and dallas goddard and everything got a good running game and everything you know now uh i'll be interested also to see you know a bradbury's out there now james bradbury whether the Eagles do something. Now, I don't know. It depends on how they're thinking. And see, it also gets it. Do they think they can win this thing now? You know, do they, you know, and, and a lot of that comes down to, to the quarterback, you know, because they have the other pieces in place. With this defense, you know, they, they could use, you know, if they had, let's say they would get Bradbury. Let's say they, they had the guy at quarterback they knew was the guy. I think they would go at it. I think they would go try to get Bradbury and they would try to, you know, um, do something, maybe bring in a veteran wide receiver, everything to go after. You know, Gary, I think you just, I, I, I think you just nailed it here. Um, I wonder after Wentz got injured, did they really believe that Foles, a backup journeyman quarterback could take that team to a Super Bowl? And then once they did, do you think that that has now been entrenched in their mind that, Hey, you really don't have to have Tom Brady to win this game. You just have to have a guy to get us to the game. And do I, you really think that they're in this place right now? Because when when you have a track record of doing something, you believe your formula works. And you know how I, I, organizations I clearly, are. They're not going to move off it. Do yeah. you believe that they think they can actually? Because, again, I mean, Angelo asked him on WIP if he thought he had a Super Bowl contending team. I, I didn't believe Foles as a backup could do it, but now they've got kind of the same dynamic with the O line and D line. Do you think they believe that at the Novacare Center? I don't know that they they believe. I think they they feel like they got a lot of the pieces in place to win it. Now I think that they feel like they're not sure about Jalen, you know, and and uh, we so you think they're then. less they're less sure about Jalen than they were about Foles? Oh well, I, I, without a doubt, because huh. see back then. Foles wasn't a journeyman. He hadn't really been around a lot. He had just been a guy who had gotten hurt. Uh, you know, he it, but he had been pretty much successful everywhere he'd been. Including so, Philly. What's that? Including Philly when he and, went 26 and three with the quarter touchdowns to interceptions. That's right. That's right. So he hadn't been a, a journeyman. So they were very confident in Nick that if if he if uh that if he got on a roll. That he could get it, and he and he got hot, man. He got hot, and you know he 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 shocked the world. So uh, they were not shocked. They believed it in Nick Foles then, uh, because he was a much much younger guy then, and um, he had he had shown glimpses. And and he was he's a streaky quarterback. He's the yep. kind of quarterback he gets hot as can be, and that's like Eli. He and, and you know what? He's probably a better backup than he is a starter. I mean. He's, he's, he could come in and he's got the confidence come in and gets on a roll. And that's what happened then. Uh, as for where they really think they are right now, I think they think they're getting close. See, that's why they're so eager about the quarterback. Because they, they feel like they've made some moves to, to uh, get them close to where they feel like they're in the running. So it's going to be interesting to what they do, boy, at that quarterback position. But you know, he's got his shot, man. He's just got to go out there and let it go, man. He's got to really – he's got to have the year that I think he he feels like he's capable of. And you can see the way he's talking. He he is putting – he's, he's working and he's he knows these areas he's got to improve in. So it's going to be interesting to see if he gets it done or not. Gary, a couple questions on the other side of the ball with defense. Jonathan Gannon, do you think with these new additions, we'll see more blitzes, we'll see more pressure – 
or do you think they're going to stay in the same umbrella defense until they figure out that second cornerback position and maybe another linebacker? How do you see this thing evolving here? Because they've added quite a few components to that side of the football. Well, you know, they like to run that five-man, uh, you know, uh, uh, lineup where they have five guys, you know, at least uh, there's opportunity. they got five lining up there to come after the quarterback. I think they're going to be more aggressive. I clearly think they are. I think that's more of him, but, you know, they're going to have to, you know, find something to do on that on that other side away from Slay. Uh, they got to they got to find an answer there, but I still think they're going to be aggressive. And I, I think that's more of his nature. It seemed like he, he, he got in a groove as the season went along. So I expect him to be aggressive, but they're going to have to work. Now, the young kid Davis, man, they got to teach him how to rush the passing. That's not something he knew. Uh, but he's going to be a force against the run. But the kid has got the potential, and it's going to be exciting to see him develop. I, I'm really eager to see him. Hey, you know. I got to tell you, Tracy Rocker texted me after he watched our interview, and he's watching it now. Uh -huh. He goes, so what, you and you and Cobb don't think the kid could pass rush? I said, that's not what we're saying. Yeah. I said, in 43 games at Georgia, he had nine sacks. That's not overly productive for the 13th pick in the draft. I mean, you you can't take the first round pick off the field on the money down because Gary, as you know, a little different than when you and I play because the feature backs aren't in the game any longer. That's right. The money down in the NFL used to be first down. Now it's third down. And if you're taking your big time players off the field on third down, you're not really a franchise type guy because that's the money down in, in today's NFL. That's all I think we're saying. Without a doubt. That's all, all we're saying is, you know, he has got to get to the point to where he can utilize his skills. Now, I see, like I said, he's got the long arms. He's got the athleticism to do it. He's just got to be a factor on third downs. And there is nothing more important or no nothing more effective against a passing game than pressure up the gut. So that's what he can do. You know, and that's what we'll be looking at. And I know uh, they got to work with them because I was out there checking them out. I see where got to get in shape. Got to get in shape, big fella. You know, he's got to make sure he's uh, he realizes that on this level. But clearly he has the talent. You can see he's, he's got the quickness. He's got it all. But he's got to get that stamina. And he's got to, you know, learn the moves. Uh, but, I, you know, I think he can do it. I don't think he's going to start. I, I, I would, think I they're going to put him. I think I, they're going to put him in that three-man rotation. And yeah. Gary, like I told you last week, mm -hmm. you got one guy making twelve point seven in Hardgrave. You got another guy making fourteen four. Yeah, you ain't sitting thirty million dollars. That's right on the bench there for a kid who's learning. Yeah. how to do third down pass rushing. You're going to use him more on first and second down. And again, I think that kind of goes back to what you and I were saying. What kind of impact do you have? Hey, run stopping is important in this league. I get that, but yeah. to me, I think the guy we're really going to have to circle is Nicobe Dean. How do you, what do you, what impact do you see him having, and what role do you see him having on this team? Let's see if we can catch up with Gary again here, and hopefully, we can catch up here. Let's see if we can bring him back in here because again, nobody's saying. Nobody's saying that, again, that Jordan Davis is not going to be an impact football player and that he's not going to be able to get himself in. In the national championship game, he was spectacular. I thought he was great, okay? Um, in the SEC title game, he's exactly what Gary said. He was out of shape. And so that kind of was my issue there, too. And I think that's all anyone's saying here. How are you going to utilize that big fella and again, Fletcher Cox is on a one-year contract. I completely get that. I completely understand all that. But the bottom line is, how is his impact going to be on this football team when you're taking him out on the money down? Again, all I'm saying, I'm saying that Dean is probably going to have a bigger impact on the football team because there's a kid that could play on first, second, and third down. William says the 34-D. William, you don't have the linebackers to play a four linebacker, thirty-four traditional defense. You don't. You don't have the linebacker for that. 
You just don't. So let's let's let let's bring Gary back here and ask him on the impact. Just a couple last questions for you, Gary. The impact mm-hmm. you think Dean has on this defense will be what this year? I, I think he's going to be in there. He's going to be playing a great deal because his skill set, I think, works with what they ask you to do now as a linebacker uh, in the NFL where he's going to be doing a lot of covering. Uh, he's going to be able to work behind that big line. They're going to keep him free, so he'll be able to go around and make tackles. And one thing I can see is the kid is smart. See, so he's going to be able to decipher what's going on with the game, and he's talking about studying formations and everything, which is – Part of the NFL, you got to know formation. What do people like to do out of different formations? Teams have different personalities. So I think he's going to be on the field a lot because he fits into what is needed at the linebacker position. Plus, you know, he's not that big, but he's going to, he's going to, he's going to have these big guys in front of him. They're going to keep people off of him. And they're going to be worried about, you know, the guys you're talking about with, you know, Fletcher and all these guys up in front. So – He's going to get a chance to do his thing. And like I said, the kid is smart. Uh, he's already talking about studying, you know, and that shows that he was kind of playing on a pro mentality on the college level. So I think he's going to be able to go in and he's going to play a lot uh, early on. Last question for you. Miles Sanders, give me give me your scouting report on him. Do you think he's good enough to be in this role, in this offense, on what they're going to ask him to do? Or do you think they need – a different type of bird in there. I was thinking somebody like when LeGarrette, Le- LeGarrette was in the building. He was a great red zone guy, LeGarrette Blunt. But then when you had Leonard Fournette on the open market, I'm like, here's a guy that caught 77 passes, could run 1,200 yards. That's the kind of guy the Eagles, in my opinion, need. They got to get that screen game going. And I see Sanders not really you know, involved in any of the screen game. What, yeah. What's your assessment on him? Well, you know, he, he's, he's got to get to the point where, look, he's got to catch the ball. If you're going to play in this offense, they're going to throw you the ball. So you got to catch the ball. And he's gotten to the point where he just, at times, will put the ball on the ground and he's, he's dropping passes and things. And, uh, you know, it's timing with the screens and things. So that's where he's got to make the type of growth. And I don't see them re-signing him for a long deal I don't see that, you know, because he has he hasn't proven he can do this. And they've had success with guys like Boston Scott and the different backups they have. So I don't think the Eagles are going to put a lot of money into a running back. And I think Miles will probably be out of here after this season is over. Uh, and they'll be dealing with, uh, you know, backups. They'll be dealing with guys that are alternating because they feel like, look, all these guys have had success behind this line. So. Why do they need to pay, up, pay a fortune to a running back? So They're not going to. They're going to do what they do in Denver. They're going to go by committee and just bring guys right. rolling in there. Gary, I appreciate yep. it. It's getting closer and closer. I mean, I, I can't wait to see what happens and how this whole thing shakes out. Gary, thank you, my friend. All right, have a good one. You got it. Gary Cobb from Fox 29. Gary Cobb said something very interesting. And I'm going to throw this off of you. You're telling me the front office had more faith in Nick Foles than Jalen Hurts. They believed that Foles could win a Super Bowl. Do they believe that Jalen can? I want to hit on that. Because I never thought about it. All right, Morgan & Morgan. Proud sponsor of the National Football Show. And also, this is where the fee is free. Folks, I've been telling you this now. Choosing an attorney when it comes to personal injuries is one of the most important things you could possibly do. Do you know how many insurance firms out there try to take advantage of people who get injured on the job or hurt on the job? They do it every day. Morgan & Morgan will not tolerate that. They're the biggest law firm in the world, okay? They are going to go to battle for you when it comes to personal injury and personal liability. They're going to take care of what they do for you because this is who they are for the people. It's not a slogan. This is what they've become because this is a creed that they believe in. The last 30 years, they've collected over $13 billion in compensation for their clients, which means this, they battle and battle and battle for you. With over 800 attorneys across the country, the army of attorneys that they have in the offices in Philadelphia, New York, Florida, all across this great country, they're going to go and do what's right for you and your family by getting that fair compensation. That's what they are, and it's who they are. Look, the call is free, 800-512-1600. The consultation is free, 800-512-1600. Nobody, 
goes into a courtroom and intimidates Morgan and Morgan because they're going to get the fair compensation for you and your family. That's 800-512-1600. And do me a favor, when you call Morgan & Morgan, tell them Big Sill sent you. After a car crash, the big insurance companies you see advertising on TV, they may try to downplay your case and might say, it's only a fender bender or it's just a herniated disc. I worry that some law firms fall for this BS. Not us. We put ourselves in your shoes and ask, what would it be like to be in your pain for the rest of our lives? A million dollars wouldn't be enough for me. There's only one Morgan & Morgan. For the people. .com. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Android TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24 7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. The big story on that can you search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. In Philadelphia, we celebrated the miracle with pride only five years ago. And then the following morning, IBEW Local 98 members went back to work, building this city, rescuing our communities from decay, and inspiring the young men and women of the region to take pride in who we are. Like the cats, Local 98 members believe in hope. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and career opportunities with Local 98, visit us, ibew98.org. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. What's that? Uh, a rocks glass? You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Holy shit. The glass is for cocktails, right? It's for this, this, this. And that. Is the length of the glass equal to your... You betcha. But is it made out of... Glass? Yo, okay, but is the rim... Smooth? Will you stop doing... That? I'm the professional here. And you're telling me I can get one of these glasses for free? That's right. One free rocks glass per customer with each first-time purchase of Stateside Vodka. All from the company that's highly awarded. Zero cars, zero sugar, and deliciously tasting vodka. So good, it just disappears. Welcome back. National Football Show with your boy, Big Sales. Hit the like button. Thank you very much, guys, for jumping aboard with us. We really appreciate it here on this Monday. Isn't it fun, sports? I told you this at the top of the show, too, when we opened up an hour ago. Okay? I told you, man. There's nothing ever boring in sports. There's so much going on. Even the stupid NBA. Hey, and you know what? I... Real quick, I'm going to move on here. Justin Jefferson, Vikings in week two, I believe, right? Um, some of the schedule, I love how the NFL does all their stuff too. They kind of like just like leak out things. Thursday, the full schedule comes out. Please, let's have Washington. Okay, I'd love to have Carson Wentz week one versus uh, the Eagles. How would that not be awesome? Praying for that. But – Sports is such – it's such great theater right now. It's really the last true reality television show that everybody enjoys watching. You just don't know, man. Okay? 
And it, 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 it's not like wrestling where there's a the theme. You know what I mean? This whole thing plays out right in front of your life, the way we watch these teams, the way we root for these teams. Hey, by the way, too, man, I'm looking forward to Aikman and Buck on Monday Night Football. Probably be the best crew they've had in there in a long time. I'm looking forward to it. They're probably going to put a lot of good games on Monday Night Football now with that crew. So I can't wait to see it. It's going to be very interesting to see. Okay. Oh, by the way, so it's week two, right? You get a chance to look at Justin Jefferson. And you get to be reminded when you see Jalen Rager on that team. What you could have had. And by the way, do you know who the second ranked wide receiver is for fantasy guys? Justin Jefferson. They think he's going to put up another spectacular season. And I'm telling you, that team rolling into the link, guys, Thielen on the other side, Jefferson on the other side, Dalvin Cook in the backfield, and Kirk Cousins. You don't really think you have a better offense than the Vikings do, do you? You have a better old line, but you don't have better skilled people as a group. Justin Jefferson or A.J. Brown? Here. Justin Jefferson or A.J. Brown? Who would you take? Who would you take? Hey, hey, D-Train. Wait, the schedule came out. Come on. It does, it does, Zach. Let me see something here with Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen stats. Don't do this, he'll stop. <laughs> Wait, don't do what? Hey, what do you mean don't do? What am I doing? I'm not doing anything. So here's Thielen's numbers. 967. 1276, 1373, he got hurt in 19, went down to 500 yards, 925 and 20, and got hurt last year where he had 800 yards. Let me see here. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So in one, two, three, four, five, six, in six seasons, truly starting, he's got 59.66. You think Devontae and him are pretty comparable right now? Who's got a better wide receiving core, Vikings or the Eagles? You better chill, Sills. <laughs> Silio, I tune into your shit for a reason. Not to get bummed out. Okay? Not to get bummed out, dude. Because when you come to town, I'll come looking for your ass. Who, who's got a better wide receiver? Come on, man. Duck says, I think it's, hey, by the way, I think it's the Vikings. But I think I'm with Duck. I think it's the Vikings, but really close. That's a good thing. You're in a conversation with the Minnesota Vikings wide receiving core. That quarterback has six seasons of 4,000 passing yards in 10 years. You've had one guy go 4,000 yards. Jefferson has 3,000 yards in two seasons. Now I see why you guys want me to stop. <laughs> I'll take Jalen Rager. No wonder the Vikings are laughing. Holy shit. He's got 3,000 yards in two seasons. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> Wait a minute here. Real quick before I move on here. I'll get a great topic at the top. You think Jalen Hurts is better than Kirk Cousins? Let me, let me, let me. Do you think? One hundred ninety-six catches, three thousand seventeen touchdowns. That's spectacular. Tony says no. Manster says no. 
No, I can't do the Sally Jesse Raphael, Tony. My wife hated him. My aunt screams at me too. You can't buy a decent gosh dang pair of glasses. I'm too cheap unless they're free. Matt Hatter, you think Jalen Hurts is a better quarterback than Kirk Cousins? No, if you're a smart person, no. Not right now. Hurts can be a better with improvement. Zach, you think he improves enough to be a better passer than Kirk Cousins? You haven't had a 4,000-yard passing person in the history of your team but one dude, Jalen, or um, Carson Wentz. I, I, I don't think he ever will be better than, um, than Kurt as a passer. Now, could he be better overall and running and moving the sticks and shit? Yeah. Can Joe? Yeah. Yeah. Like he, Hey, he can win with his, well, I still think that's debatable. Strong says cousins 10 times better than hurts. Dude, that guy's thrown for a, a boatload of yards. All right. Listen here, man. I'm going to reset, but Gary Cobb said that front office of the Philadelphia Eagles, in his opinion, had more faith in Nick Foles carrying them to a Super Bowl than they do Jalen Hurts. I want to expand on that. Do you believe that? You think the organization – truly believed even after Wentz went down that that team could win a Super Bowl. I didn't. But they had to have. Did you? Hit the like button. Hour three. Keep it right here on the National Football Show. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Android TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24 7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. The big story on action. Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. In Philadelphia, we celebrated the miracle with pride only five years ago. And then the following morning, IBEW Local 98 members went back to work, building this city, rescuing our communities from decay, and inspiring the young men and women of the region to take pride in who we are. Like the cats, Local 98 members believe in hope. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and career opportunities with Local 98, visit us, ibew98.org. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. What's that? Uh, a rocks glass? You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Holy shit. Glasses for cocktails, right? It's for this, this, this. And that. Is the length of the glass equal to your... You betcha. But is it made out of... Glass? Okay, but is the rim... Smooth? Will you stop doing... That? I'm the professional here. And you're telling me I can get one of these glasses for free? That's right. One free rocks glass per customer with each first-time purchase of Stateside Vodka. All from the company that's highly awarded. Zero cars, zero sugar, and deliciously tasting vodka. So good, it just disappears. Hour 
three. Welcome back, National Football Show. Appreciate everybody stepping in here. You guys have been spectacular, as you always are here on this Monday. Please hit the like button. Thank you so much. As By the way, now that we're in this window here, we're going to have some hoop guys, some baseball guys. Probably try to drop Ice Cube on again because Big Three starting up again. So I talked to Cube the other day, man. He goes, hey, Big Sills, what's going on? I want to promote Big Three hoop. I told him this, man. Cube, you can come on my show anytime you want, brother. You can come on this baby anytime you want. Did some stuff at the NFL draft, too, in Vegas. So we'll try to get Ice Cube on this week, too. So I think he's been on either two or three times. I think two or three times Ice Cube's been on. So great weekend in sports. We appreciate everybody stepping in with us. Um, I want to say it one more time. How cool is it to have a guy like Joel Embiid in your city? How cool is it when you get athletes that give a shit where they play? Dude. Man. (laughs) If I'm at the Wells Fargo Center, man, I'm doing this. This guy's my favorite hoop player. This guy's putting himself in the same room with Allen Iverson and Malone. Dr. J and Barkley, Mo Mo Cheeks, stuff like that, man. Putting yourself in a conversation where people remember you. Hey, they're going to go like this. Hey, hey, that's the guy that got hosed out of the MVP. Joel Embiid is the MVP of Philly right now. What would you rather have? The MVP in a city that will embrace you for the rest of your life and remember your legacy? Or would you rather be a dude that wins an award that's hollowless? Some people walk into cities, win awards, this walk out, no one remembers them. There's certain dudes like Cal Ripken, Baltimore, Tony Gwynn, San Diego, Derek Jeter, Yankees, Brady, Patriots, Kelsey, Eagles, Schmidt, Phillies, Clark, Flyers. Look at the names that I'm naming to you. That's right, Chris. It's a different level. First name that comes to mind when I think of the Flyers. It's two, unfortunately. I don't want to sit on a fence, but I think of Bernie Perrant and I think of Clark. I don't think of anybody else. And I know they've had legendary players since that time. But those are the two dudes that I think of all the time. Phillies. Man, I think of, I think of Schmidt, Lazinski, Carlton. If I had to pick one. If I had to pick one Philly, man, that's hard. If I had to pick one Philly, man, Carlton, when that year he won 27, they sucked. The Phillies suck. Dick Allen's my favorite player, though. Okay, I got, I told you, I showed my baseball. I showed my baseball signed by Dick Allen. I got to say Carlton, man. I was a kid. I used to watch Carlton and Seaver and Carlton and Gibson. Dude, Steve Carlton, man, was the best left-hander I ever saw. Yeah, it rose a little bit. I'm going to have to say, if I had to... That's right, man. My Mount Rushmore. I never thought of that. Clark's my guy. I know Bobby, too. He's my flyer, my my Philly. It's not Ryan Howard. He's a good ball player, man. It's gotta be, it's gotta be Carlton. Robin Roberts. Yeah, man, I'm going. I'm 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 going Carlton. Carlton for me. 
dude, that guy on the hill, he was stupid great. Stupid great. Right? Eagle. I'm partial to Jerome, you know that. But the legendary Philadelphia Eagle guy that you go and say, he is it. Bednarik or Reggie? Who is it? Bednarik or Reggie? Both? Well, no. One's a champion. Bednarik or Reggie? Reggie? Reggie. That's such an honor. Reggie. Reggie's the best Eagle since 1960. The best Eagle since 60. It's not close, actually. There's no one that close. Because he's the greatest D lineman of all time. You can make the argument him and LT are the greatest defensive football players of all time. If you pick, if you flip the coin, you're not losing. I, it's one of those when you flip a coin, Reggie or LT, you're not losing the coin flip. You're just not losing the coin flip. Dude, Dawkins was a great player, but let's not get crazy here. Let's not get crazy. And Sixer, the greatest Sixer, I think you're going to be shocked when I say this. Wilt won it in 67, led the NBA in assists that year, believe it or not. Um... Dr. J, Malone, Malone, Barkley, Iverson, and Bede. If I have to pick one, it's Malone. Full, 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 and full. <laughs> this guy's playing against the Lakers and the Celtic teams. And they beat the shit out of teams in 83. They destroyed teams. I think they lost, correct me if I'm wrong, I think they lost two games that year in the finals. I think they were 15-2. and two. Some nutty some nutty uh, time like that. I think they were 15-2. and two. I think they lost two games, man. That Sixer team was spectacular. Dr. J, man, Dr. J over Moses. Moses won two straight MVPs there, dude. Maybe even three. I think he won two of Philly. Hey, Jeffrey, Carlton doesn't get a lot of love. Why? He was a beast on the hill in Philly. One year, that baseball team sucked so bad. He had 27 wins. And I think that team had like 65 wins total. I mean... He had 27 wins, like on a 68-win baseball team. He was crushing people. Why wouldn't a guy like that get – because he's a weird dude. He is. Okay? He was a weird dude, man. All right, let me get into this here. I never thought about that. That's my first time I've ever done that. 57 wins strong. So they, they have 57 wins the year Carlton won 27 ball games. He's three away from winning 30. Okay? And they only won 57. How you doing? <laughs> yeah. Man, that's got to be one of the greatest differentials of all time on an impact on a pitcher. Dude, that guy was sick great. Every time he'd roll into Shea, man, you snuck over if you were a Yankee fan watching him and Seaver go. Game was over in two hours. Both these guys going nine nine innings or eight and two thirds, and the game was over. The game was over, dude. McGraw would come in for the uh, Phillies, and McGraw was a former Met too. One was part of that seventy three team. Oh man, dude, those are great times. Love that. All right, hit the like button. So last hour, 
please do me a favor. If you've missed that interview, go back and watch it a little bit later on. I'm going to paraphrase this here. Gary Cobb said something that was interesting because we started it out and I, I started the program out. Wouldn't it bother you? Wouldn't it bother you if you were Jalen Hurts that the organization has not given more of a endorsement to you being the quarterback here on this team? Would it bug you? Hal Greer was a great player. Was a total great player. Um, wouldn't it bother you? Would it bother you? Jeremiah says, no, it wouldn't bother you that you've been basically told, Jeremiah, that you're only given one year to go out on an audition. So are you going to get the full 17 games? Jalen doesn't care. Jalen doesn't care about a confidence from an organization when it comes to thinking that he's the future of this team. You think he doesn't care? Really? So I was having a conversation with with Gary, and Gary, I go, Gary, so do you believe that the organization believes that they thought they could win a Super Bowl after Wentz went down? And Gary goes, you got to remember something about Nick Foles at that time. Nick Foles wasn't considered a journeyman. He was just considered. He was just considered a guy who had gotten hurt a lot. I never looked at it like that. See, you start looking at in present day evaluation how you see, because right now when we look at Nick Foles, he's just a dude. Okay? He's just a But back then, when he was backing up Hurts, he wasn't looked at as just a dude yet. He was looked at as a guy who had all the fundamental tools to be a good quarterback who couldn't stay healthy, right? So the Eagles in the back of their mind went, well, if he's healthy, this guy's as good a passer as anybody in the league. We've seen that, even not in the Super Bowl year. What was that one year? Was it with Chip? Was it, was it, was it with Chip that he had 26 or 27 touchdowns and three picks? Right, So he had shown glimpses of being successful. So the organization, after Wentz got hurt in Los Angeles at the Coliseum, they were probably thinking, this guy can still get it done, right? Follow me. So you mean to tell me you think that the organization had more confidence in Nick Foles leading the Eagles to a Super Bowl in 17 than the organization has right now in Jalen leading the team to a Super Bowl. Do you think they have the same amount of confidence in Jalen Hurts in 2022 that they had in Foles once he got hold of the team in 2017? Do you think? Do you think they believe that they have the same belief in Jalen that they did in Nick Foles? Tony says, hell no. James says, no. How's that even a comparison? Wentz got them to the doorstep. The comparison is, is that they haven't endorsed Jalen Hurts in any way whatsoever. They just said, here's 2022. That's not an endorsement. They couldn't find anybody better. That's not an endorsement. Do you think the Eagles believe they can win a Super Bowl? Okay, I'll make it simpler for you. Do you think they think they can win a Super Bowl this year with Jalen Hurts like they did after Wentz went down in 17? Do you think they believe this guy, this guy could carry them to the Super Bowl? Where's the Super Bowl played this year? Where, where's the Super Bowl played? Is it in Vegas? Went set up the run. I'm asking you, do you think that they think this kid can lead them to the Super Bowl? 
Hurts said, this is my team. Great. Brandon Foles has way more experience than Hurts. Well, wait a minute. They got a $100 million wide receiver. Alshon Jeffries? Tony, I think it is. Do you believe they think that kid can lead them to the Super Bowl with the same confidence they had in Foles? Super Bowls in Arizona and Glendale. Thank you, Randy. Brandon, great take. Would you pay a receiver that kind of money if you don't believe in him? That's a great take. Because, Brandon, I might not be building the team for him. I've heard other guys on this channel say that. They may not be building it for him. You know what? Let me ask you something here. And I think we're hitting on something great here. Do you think that Howie Roseman and Jeffrey Lurie had tremendous confidence always in Doug Peterson? Do you think they always had great confidence in Doug? Because I'm going to make a comparison here. See, I personally now get it. I have officially arrived. Okay, watch this. That organization believes that organizations build championships, not players. They've got the Jerry Krause mentality. Howie Roseman looks at players and coaches as interchangeable commodities and assets. They believe, like the Bulls believed during the Jordan era, that organizations build it and win it. His actions, his drafting, his comments, his victory laps, his victory parades, the way he handles himself, all speaks to who this is and what he is. The Eagles as an organization don't believe that players win titles. I'll take that back. They believe in the players that they put on the field at a respected time win titles. So if Doug Peterson didn't have the confidence of the owner of the general manager, what makes you think that Howie is not building this team and saying this, if he can't get it done, we're just going to find another guy. He's an interchangeable piece. Howie's building this team to be a Super Bowl championship team. And he has now put the quarterback on the clock. He's now officially in the sundial. He's turned the sand now. If this kid gets out of the gate slowly, do they have a quick or do they have a slow hook for him? You're right. You spent $100 million on a wideout. You're not going to sit around and fart around for a whole year figuring out whether or not that kid is the guy or not. They'll put Gardner Mitchell's ass in there. They'll do something they may even tank the year if it happens so they could get a better pick to get one of these quarterbacks. The Philadelphia Eagles 2022 season is going to be in the first eight games of the year. Okay? It's going to be in the first eight games. They're four and four at the halfway mark. That's not going to cut it. That's not going to cut it, and you'll see decisions being made because no matter what they do, no matter who they bring in, they know Tim Tebow slash Jalen Hurts can't deliver. And they'll want one of these four quarterbacks that we mentioned today in Philadelphia. There it is. Am I wrong? Carson Strong, please stop. Carson Strong has no value. He's not even in. He's a practice squad player at best. The backup quarterbacks are always some of the most popular guys. He's a nobody. 
your future is in one of these picks. I would say this to you. I would say this to you. Do you think how he looks at Jalen and says this? Watch this. This is how the owner and and how we talk about Jalen. And you tell me if you think I'm off base. I'll listen to you guys. I always do. Chuck says the front office lacks, lacks patience. Chuck, of course they do. They lack patience. Of course they do. Because they believe front offices win titles. So player development is not something on their agenda. They want the fast fix. Do you think they look at Jalen and say this between the two and the doors, owner and GM? Let's be candid here. Man, Jalen, good kid. Second round pick turned out to be correct. He's a good football player. But over the next two years, what do you think his growth level is going to be? You think he's going to grow like some of you do into Steve McNair, into Donovan McNabb? Or do you think he's going to have a slower drip into being a quarterback that you can lean on? Does Jalen Hurts' skill sets right now Inability to throw the deep pass and not very accurate. Do you think he's going to get better over the next five years where you feel five years? He doesn't have five years. He's got one year. In the next 17 games, do you think Jalen improves enough for Jeffrey Lurie and the owner to do this? You know, he's a good player. We weren't wrong, but he's just not going to come along quick enough for us to be able to win. So we're going to use him as a bridge. We're going to trade one of our first rounders, Hertz, and a third to move up in the draft to get one of these quarterbacks that are going to be coming out. There's four of them that are going to be in the top 10 alone. Do you think that's what they're thinking? Jake, the Pats pick, a guard they could have got in the third round. Not getting it. Smile, Bridge, he's got one, two years, depending on how he plays this year. Davey, I don't think he does. Because I don't think that the front office has patience. They don't have two-year patience. You fired a coach that won a Super Bowl. You fired Doug Peterson. You moved off of Wentz. You think they're going to, for some magical experiment, going to change the way they think for Jalen Hurts? No way. That's not their character. Daz, I agree. He's got 17 games. Andrew. But see, wait a minute, guys. You're not going to suck. You're going to be good. You're going to win games. But how he's got to look at it, can we win that game? That game. Here, let me give you another example of this. So, in Cleveland, you drafted a guy the number one overall pick in the NFL draft four years ago, five years ago, whatever it is now, in Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield's not terrible. He's not. And Jimmy Haslam, the owner, and Andrew Barry sat around together with the coach, Kevin Stefanski, and you know what they came together and said? Look, 
Baker can win games, but he's not going to win that game. And they gave $230 million in guaranteed money to a guy who's got 22 sexual assault charges or accusations against him. Put that shit to the side and said, Mayfield can't win it. What would make you think, or don't get out of your mind here and have an arrogant attitude that you think all of a sudden the Eagles think that Jalen Hurts is not being evaluated the same way Baker Mayfield was evaluated in Cleveland. And know this, if you put here, if you put Jameis Winston, not Jameis Winston, Deshaun, Deshaun Watson, excuse me. If you put Deshaun Watson on that Philadelphia Eagle team, they win the Super Bowl. With that offense, the way it's constructed right now, you'd be the best offense in the NFC with Deshaun Watson. Brandon says, do you think Deshaun Watson could play that game? Hasn't done it yet. I do. I do. I think he's a franchise guy. I think he's um Yeah, Chris. Two two is in the same boat as Jalen. The Miami Dolphins will be doing the same thing. They'll be moving up. You know those picks that they got from the 49ers? Chris Greer, the general manager, is doing exactly what Howie Roseman's doing. You know what that is? They're getting ready for this 2023 draft in case their guy bombs as well. If Tua goes out and throws for 3,900 yards, they get bounced in the first round. They do a really nice job. They win 10, 11 games. That's not going to be good enough. You just gave a guy $25 million as a wideout. You got all those draft picks from the 49ers so they could get in the two-hole to get Trey Lance. What are you doing with them? That's right, Phillip. Last year's off. If the Eagles run last year's offense in any game this year, you'll know the writing's on the wall already. Oh, and that's another great point. If the Eagles have to re- resort back to going to last year's offense, Jalen's finished. It's not what they're looking for. It's exactly what some of you guys have said. You're not paying a guy $100 million to run the rock and get him 10, 10 targets, three catches a game, and draft a guy in the first round as a former Heisman winner. You're not you're, – that's – it makes no sense. Ski says the Eagles will win more games than the Vikings. Well, you don't have a better offense than them. But as – the NFC East versus the NFC North. I think it's going to be pretty close, actually. Okay, you're not a better offense than the Vikings as a group. You're not. Justin Jefferson is better than AJ. Adam Thielen's comparable, and the running back's superior, and the quarterback's superior. It's not a rip, it's reality. See, when I talk like this, though, people go, you're shitting on the Eagles. No, I'm not. We're having a come-to-Jesus conversation and how this is playing out here. Do you guys do you guys think that the Eagles, after the draft and after free agency and OTAs and all this, what did they do? Just take the rest of the year off till training camp, July 27th? They're sitting around preparing right now on a game plan on how to play this out. Here's what, here. If Jalen Hurts gets out to a five and two start, man, that kind of puts a cog in it. They get out to a five and two start and they look good. Howie and the front office are going to start doing this. Don't think sabotaging. And it's not beneath you guys to sabotage your season. 
that Nate Sunfeld shit that went on two years ago at the end of the season. Don't think they'll sabot- not sabotage things because they have. That's self-sabotaging, Nate Sudfeld. <laughs> hey, we want to and, – and, hey, when Doug even said it, I felt so bad for him. I wanted to text him. Dude, you don't mean that. We wanted to take a look at him at the final game. You, come on, man. Yeah. Chris, if it's four and four, I think he's doomed. If Jalen Hurts starts the first half of the season and he's four and four, he's doomed. Sills, could we win the Super Bowl with this off with Hundley as the quarterback? Oh, I like that kid in Baltimore. I need to see more of him, but I like him. That kid Snoop, is that his name? God, I like that kid. That kid stepped in for Lamar Jackson last year. That kid can ball, man. I talked to Kyle Whittingham at Utah, too. He said, best competitor he's ever been around. The kid could play. Get the name right? Studfeld. How about Stiffeld? I think it's more stiff. I, I, hey, I still, Eric, I thought he could play. Samuel says four and four. Sills is just talking at him. Hey, we'll see. Okay. So you think if he starts the season out in the first half of the year, four and four, you'll think they'll be happy or sad with that. You think they'll be happy or sad with that? Four and four. Last year after seven, you were two and five. Guarantee you will start resorting back to running the ball if you're four and four or two and five. And that'll be the end of it. That'll be the end. If they're not five and two, something like that, six and two, they're going in a different direction. They want to see, they want to see massive improvement here because they, according to Gary, they think they're close. And four and four, and three and four, or three and five, they ain't gonna cut it. Depends how he's playing. No, it doesn't. You're getting yardage and shit time. I don't care about them yards. I don't care if you're throwing for 350 yards and you're two and six. Who cares? You're playing from behind. You got to throw for more yards. That's not going to tell me anything. We're going 0 and 17. See, Meta, nobody can have a conversation with you here. That's all we're doing. You're having a conversation. Meta on. See, Meta, you're such an Eagle fan. <laughs> Suck, we blow. No good. It's over. Silio said we suck. That's it. You're right. Ish. Dead on, man. Oh, wait a minute. Ish, you may be new to it, but this is what you're uh everyone's saying here. Hold on for a minute. <laughs> Meta. Here, here. Ish, I got I, I I got what you're hoping for this year. I wrote it down. Where is it? Here, here's the expectations. Let me find it here. Oh, yeah, 13 and 4. 4,200 yards, 25, <laughs> 25 touchdowns. A.J. Brown, 89 catches, 1,100 yards, 9 touchdowns. Devontae Smith, 75 catches, 1,050 and 6 TDs. Dallas Goddard, 55 catches, 800 yards, and eight touchdowns. That's what our – that's what we're expecting this year. I'm talking about four and four. Got to go four and two in the division. Chris, you got to beat Dallas. Here. Do you know how Jalen Hurts keeps his job? 
I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you exactly how Jay I'm gonna write it down because you know me with CTE. I just wrote it down. There's only one way. I'm going to tell you what that is next here. Don't forget, my friends, Morgan & Morgan, proud sponsors of the National Football Show and Big Sills. This is where the fee is free, my friends. Listen, if you're hurt or injured on the job, there is no place like Morgan & Morgan. They are the biggest liability law firm in the United States of America, which means this, they will not be intimidated. You know, sometimes people go, oh, it's a fender bender. That's not what happens at Morgan & Morgan. Every case is an enormous case because you and your family to get the true compensation that you deserve need an attorney's firm like Morgan and Morgan for the people. It's not just the saying it's who they are. It's what they do with over 800 attorneys in offices in Philly, New York, Florida, across the country. No law firm will go to battle more for you than Morgan and Morgan. This is what they are and who they are. It's what they've been doing now for 30 years, $13 billion in compensation for their clients. That's what Morgan & Morgan does. The call is free, 800-512-1600. The consultation is free, 800-512-1600. That's 800-512-1600. And do me a favor, when you call my friends at Morgan & Morgan, tell them Big Sill sent you. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. When you're hit from behind in a car crash, the insurance company may try to say, you can't possibly be hurt. It was only a few miles an hour. It's simply not true. You see, here's the thing. Getting hit at 10 miles per hour is like falling off of this. 15 miles per hour, like this. And only 25 miles per hour, this. Injured, dial pound law. There's only one Morgan & Morgan. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Android TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24 7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. The big story on that can Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. In Philadelphia, we celebrated the miracle with pride only five years ago. And then the following morning, IBEW Local 98 members went back to work, building this city, rescuing our communities from decay, and inspiring the young men and women of the region to take pride in who we are. Like the cats, Local 98 members believe in hope. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and career opportunities with Local 98, visit us, ibew98.org. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. What's that? Uh, a rocks glass? You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Holy shit. Glasses for cocktails, right? It's for this, this, this. And that. Is the length of the glass equal to your... You betcha. But is it made out of... Glass? Okay, but is the rip... Smooth? Will you stop doing... That? I'm the professional here. And you're telling me I can get one of these glasses for free? That's right. One free rocks glass per customer with each first-time purchase of Stateside Vodka. All from the company that's highly awarded. Zero cars, zero sugar, and deliciously tasting vodka. So good, it just disappears.
Welcome back. National Football Show here on a Monday. Appreciate you coming aboard. Thank you so much. Hit the like button. 215, you're right. If the Eagles go 10-7 and seven this year, that's a failure season. He's right. 10-7 and seven's failure. 10-7? and seven? Great. Hey, you made it to the playoffs. Congratulations. And? <laughs> Make it to the playoffs to get destroyed. How'd you feel about the way? To, hey, honestly, let me ask you this. What was your th- what was your take on it? Give me the 2021 season. What was the letter grade for you? This is going to tell me a little bit kind of what Xander's been telling me. Tell me what, what grade would you give that 2021 season? They go 10 and 7 and then get on fire in the playoffs. C plus, D plus, B minus, C minus, C plus. Hatter? I said seven games. C plus, C minus, C. So you guys look at it as an average year. D plus F. C. You guys are good. That's right. B minus? No way. B minus is a second round win is a second round game. C plus? Wait a minute though, Chris. Well, you know, this was Jalen's first. I don't give a shit, man. This is not tryouts. Well, we had a first year quarter. I I, I don't care. I don't care. So what, are we on a GI bill now? Or what are we on a mortgage payment here? Well, you know, for good in four years or five years from now. This year, as long as we play well and get into the playoffs, this is part of the growing. What do you think this is like growing a tree? You're supposed to be good every year. It's the NFL. Well, we had a good, you know, quarter. I don't, I don't care. That's why these guys make all this money. That's why you're getting paid as a professional. Okay. Matt Hatter. Jags had an F year. Quarterback didn't develop. The head coach was a joke. And I said, don't you guys remember what I said? I said, Urban Liar won't make the year. I know some of you probably, oh, wait, I know this because I said it. But I, I thought Urban Meyer wouldn't make the year. I thought he'd be fired during the year because he would be exposed for the 30 years. And he was. You know why? Because you know what a liar is. You can't lie to grown men. Grown men know when you're lying or bullshitting them. You can't bullshit guys like that. I I said Urban Liar will expose himself. (laughs) I didn't realize he literally would. But And it costs Trevor Lawrence development. It's a developmental year. But you know what he'll be better for? Because you know why? There's a turd head coach, and now he's got a true professional head coach in Doug Peterson. He'll be better for it this year on knowing what not to do and what to do. Doug will show him what to do. Meyer showed him what not to do. When you can, in my opinion, Trevor Lawrence will learn so much in these next 17 games and over 34 games, he would have learned what a turd coach is and what a Super Bowl champion coach demands to you as a franchise quarterback. Be the best thing happen to him. Dude, if you win 13, 14 games this year, that'd be amazing. Do you get rid of a playoff winning quarterback? Bad coaching schemes on both sides of the ball, Sills. Last time, Eric, the last time the Jags were good, 
I think Blake Bortles was there. I think they beat the hell out of the Steelers. Am I right? Didn't they beat the Ste- beat the hell out of the Steelers in the divisional game? Bortles threw for like 500 yards at Hines. Uh, he'll, the, the, the Jags are in for a they're in for a facelift. They're gonna. They're, in my opinion, I think they're in for a great facelift. Seth goes. I'm super worried about Gannon's D. Seth, hang on here. You basically got two first round draft choices here. You've added Hassan Reddick. Come on now. Gannon needs a CB two for sure. And in my opinion, probably I'd like to have another backer in there. So when you go to a 34 look and you got backers that can play and scrape, I'd like to see more of that. Here's what Jalen has to do this coming season. Jalen Hurts has to outplay Dak. Because that will strike a fear in in Cowboy Nation. Right now, the Cowboys look at the Eagles as a joke because of the quarterback. They don't think the quarterback can do it. They don't think the quarterback can win. Hey, everybody likes Jalen. But nobody believes he's a Super Bowl champion quarterback. Okay? Nobody. Some would say, Sills, did you think that Tom Brady was? No. But after that first year, Bill Belichick, he did. And when Belichick put him back in, Over Bledsoe, who had won that divisional game. I think it was the AFC Championship game, actually. Bledsoe won the AFC Championship game, and Belichick went, nah, we're going back to Brady. Took him one year of starting football to see it. And by the way, Belichick is one of the greatest quarterback evaluators as a head coach in league history. At one time, he had four people that were in his quarterback room starting on different teams. Garoppolo was in San Francisco. Jacoby Brissett was in Indy. Um, Brady was in with the Pats. Garoppolo, Brissett, and Brady. I thought there was a fourth guy. Garoppolo, Brissett, and Brady. Three dudes. Three dudes were in his room starting. More so Gannon's scheme. You can't give quarterbacks 80% completion. You've got to play. You've got to beat Dallas. Pats did have a good defense. Those first two years and three years, I would say this ish about Brady and the Patriots. They won on time of possession running the ball, special teams, no turnovers. And as Brady got more comfortable in the offense, they opened it up more. The first half of Brady's career, the first 10, absolutely. Scheme, defense. But then again, there was no Hall of Fame wide receiver on any of those teams that won Super Bowls. They were the Deion Branches of the world, the Troy Browns, the Edelmans and Amendolas. These guys aren't going to Canton. Matt Castle didn't even start at Southern Cal. He won 11 ball games. When Brady got hurt against the Chiefs in the opener, Castle won 11 games that year. Then he went on and won a division title in Kansas City. I mean... Dak, listen, Ben Coates is really good. You're right. Gronk's a tight end, no, Davy boy. Not a wide receiver. Okay? Not a wide out. Brady didn't play with one first-round wide receiver when they were winning Super Bowls. This guy, Nikhil Harry, they got out of Arizona State's a bust. 
All the rest of them guys were dudes. GT, I can't wait either. I think you're under some mistake, GT. That's not the kind of show I do. I'll look at you, GT, and go like this. Man, you were dead right. Way to go. And good. Colby, Moss didn't win a Super Bowl. Moss didn't win a Super Bowl. He never played with one Hall of Fame wideout that won a Super Bowl and won a rock with him in New England. Not one. As a matter of fact, the only guy that was in a huddle skill set wise, I've brought this up to you before, is Sony Michelle, who was a first round draft choice. The rest of them were not first round picks. Nobody in the offensive skill set outside of guys in the old line were first rounders, including the quarterback. That's what makes that so crazy. You paid $100 million for a wide out and drafted a guy in the first round. Brady never had any of that. Remember how they got Moss? The Raiders threw him away for a sixth rounder. They dumped him because they thought his career was over in Oakland. Remember how Moss got there? I think the Patriots maybe gave up a third and a sixth. Not one guy was a first-round draft choice. Yeah, Chris, they got draft. I think it was a three and a six. Yeah, but Davey, Brady's the GOAT, and they knew it immediately. They had given Drew Bledsoe in the offseason of that year $100 million. He was the first $100 million quarterback had an 18-5 signing bonus, and then they moved them after that Super Bowl in the division to Buffalo. Try that one on. Here, you can have Drew. We're sticking with this guy, the six-round draft choice, on a rookie contract. Dude, you talk about cojones and having a big pair of cannolis. That's it. You got, you got, you're paying a lot of money here in Philly. They didn't pay anything in New England for that offense. They didn't pay anything. Gronk was a second rounder. Brady took haircuts. And they, Amendola and Edelman. One guy I think was a quarterback in college, and the other guy was a nobody. Oh, and they ended up getting Wes Welker, too. I forgot on a trade from the Dolphins because he was a pretty decent special teams guy. Remember something? Welker started his career with the Chargers. The Dolphins made a deal for him because they thought he was a good special teams guy. Belichick liked him, brought him up, turned him into a slot receiver who could arguably be in line to be a Hall of Famer maybe one day. They didn't spend any money on those six titles. Who was the highest paid guy? The quarterback and then who? Gronk? Okay. In that whole Super Bowl era in New England, do you know there's only going to be two Hall of Famers come off that offense? Gronk and Brady. The rest of them, they're not going, they're going to be considered really great Patriots. How many guys on that Patriot team during that era you think are going to the Super Bowl or are going to the Hall of Fame that played there? Maybe Wolfork. Maybe. Revis? Maybe. Maybe. Sills Hurts is in the same situation like Russell Wilson was in Seattle with the Legion of Boom and Dude, the reason that Russell Wilson fell apart in Seattle, they let components in the offensive line and they never replaced beast mode. It wasn't about finding a wideout trying to bring Jimmy Graham in. It was more about they couldn't find a replacement to run the ball. Rodney Harrison's best days were in San Diego, Susan. Okay? His best days. 
And plus, he's only got one Pro Bowl. Susan, I think he's a Hall of Fame player. I think Rodney Harrison's a Hall of Fame player, but I think he's only got one or two Pro Bowls. Not going to get in with that. He's not going to get in. He's not. Guys, we had a bunch of fun here. So much to hit on. Hey, man, let's see what happens with Joel Embiid and James Harden. The big question is going to be with Harden is can he put back to back? And what do you think right now? Hey, it's May 9th. Before we tag out of here, give me a give me four days this month. Here's my day for Joe Girardi being fired. I wrote down May 24th. He'll be fired May 24th. Okay? Matt Hatter, you guys are awesome. I got May 24th. Guys, hit the like button. We'll catch you tomorrow going 3 to 6 Eastern time. We'll catch you on the